I'll say you Kevin. To, you want to start recording, Laura? Yep, you're on. Okay, we're all set. Okay, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Clark. Okay, uh, welcome to the uh, November 9th, 2020 meeting of the Town of Niskiuna Planning Board and Zoning Commission. Mr. Henry, would you please call the roll? Mr. LaFlem. Present. Mr. Khan. Here. Mr. McPartland. Here. Mr. Darpino. Here. Mr. Oster. Here. Ms. Shenfield. Here. Ms. Gold. Present. Chairman Walsh. Here. Okay. Okay. And um, Mr. Scrubby Tennis is excused tonight, and Ms. Gold will be sitting in uh, as a voting member tonight on the board in his absence. Okay. Um, we have no minutes uh, available for tonight. I know they're a work in progress and we're close, but uh, they weren't ready uh, for review. So we'll have a couple sets for the next meeting. So that'll bring us right to uh, the public hearings. Tonight we have a public hearing on 2207, 2209 Knott Street special use permit and tenant change uh, for a restaurant. Um, Mr. Henry, would you please read the public notice? Notice is hereby given that pursuant to section 187-7 of the code of the town of Niskayuna and the applicable provisions of New York state town law, section 276, a public hearing will be held by the planning board and zoning commission of the town of Niskayuna by video conference on the ninth day of November 2020 at 7 p.m. to consider an application from Thomas Nietzsche for a site plan review and special use permit at 2207 2209 Knott Street East in the town of Niskayuna, tax parcel ID 40.14-5-50. The property is located within the CN Commercial Neighborhood Zoning District and the Town Center Overlay District. A copy of the site plan application will be available for inspection at www.niskayuna.org slash planning board under the news and announcement tab and will be shown electronically during the public hearing. To participate in the public hearing by video conference, copy this link in your web browser, meet.google.com forward slash ZXV dash a y r q dash v q g to join the public hearing by telephone dial one two zero eight eight five six eight two nine eight and enter the following pin two two six nine four two four four eight if you are unable to participate electronically or by telephone but would like to submit a comment to be read during the public hearing please email your comment to lrobertson at nistuna.org by 4 p.m. on November 9th, 2020. The Planning Board and Zoning Commission of the Town of Nistuna will hear all persons interested during the aforementioned public hearing by order of the Planning Board of the Town of Nistuna, New York, Kevin A. Walsh, Chairman, Planning Board and Zoning Commission. Okay, thank you, Mr. Henry. And we have Mr. Nicky on the line. And uh, Mr. Nicky, do uh, you hear me okay? I can, yes, thank you. Sorry, I All wanted right. to mute my line while you were talking there. No, thank you. And uh, so you, can you give an overview for the public uh, about your proposal here? So before we, you know, then we'll open up for public comment after you give a brief uh, summary of the proposal. Sure. So the uh, the plan is to, I've already leased the former barber shop uh, that has an entrance on Knott Street next to Lang's Pharmacy, uh, as well as the former David's Beauty Salon behind Lang's Pharmacy with an entrance on Clifton Park Road. Um, the intention is to uh, take the adjoining wall between those two spaces and open them up to make a 1300 and change square foot uh, restaurant space. Uh, the restaurant seats 38 at capacity uh, at table seating another 10 seats at the bar. Uh, we also will have a takeout window on the Clifton Park side that will sell, uh, or I'm not sorry, not sell, but serve uh, patrons who want to walk up uh, or drive up and take food home to go, especially considering uh, the current health crisis. Uh, and then during the warmer weather months, we intend to serve uh, soft serve ice cream and gelato uh, through that same window. Um, 
At present, we are uh, obviously uh, requesting a special use permit um, or the suggestion of this board for a special use permit. And um, I'm trying to think, uh, other than that, what else I can tell you uh, about the project that's not in the description there. Uh, we'll be doing the upfit ourselves. All restrooms ADA compliant. All life safety has already been uh, uh, designed and drawn out by our engineer and su submitted to the town. Um, we have not yet begun to do anything because we wanted to make sure we addressed the community at large and uh, were able to, you know, uh, we're able to share what we believe to be anyway the merits of the proposal uh, in this public forum. So uh, that's, that's up to date where we are. Okay, maybe just uh, one thing you could add is I know you have some experience, uh, similar experience. I do. You can... I do. So I uh, I was uh, born in the restaurant business. Um, I have. Uh, I also own the Comedy Works Comedy Club in Saratoga Springs, uh, previously uh, Comedy Club uh, in Albany. Um, I have uh, one in Las Vegas, and since I was 14 years old, I've been in the food and beverage industry. Uh, I do have uh, two New York State liquor licenses currently in my name. Uh, I have never had a police call due to an issue with uh, an alcohol-related issue. I have never had uh, uh, an infraction with the New York State Liquor Authority at all. Um, and I would add, especially in this industry where there is a lot of turnover and things do change, uh, I have uh, some of my staff who've been with me for over 10 years, and I'm fiercely proud of the fact that we treat our people right and our patrons right and, uh, and keep them around. So the, um, I'm trying to think other than that, what I can tell you about the proposal. Sorry here. But... Um, yeah, we do need to do a full uh, a full build out to the space, um, but it's not anything that's beyond uh, my scope. My most recent project was in Saratoga Springs, uh, 7,500 square feet. Uh, I do live in the neighborhood, uh, walking distance, which is nice, um, and I'm looking forward to getting started. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nicky. Uh, Laura, I don't know if you had a plan. Uh, were you going to read uh, anything that was uh, sent in in the emails first and start with that, or did you want to go to the public that's uh, logged in? Um, yeah, so my plan, I think, so that there's some uh, kind of break in my voice is that I'll go through um, the emails and when I get to one that I know, you know, I sent and I want to speak, I'll call them out and if they're on, then they can speak then. And then, um, you know, then we can open it up when I'm when I'm fully done. If that's okay. That sounds good. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Although quickly, I sent this to you guys um, just now. And I just wanted to show you, I'm not going to be reading everybody's name. I think Kevin and I discussed this, um, you know, that we can attach the petition to the, um, to the minutes, but um, the applicant submitted a petition of 101 names in support of the proposal. And this is just a quick, and then he attached a map showing where the names were coming from. To show that they're from the surrounding area. So that is um, 101 names in favor of the petition. Not going to read every single name, but we will attach them to the minutes. L Laura, can you go back to the map just for a minute? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you just go yes. back to the map for a minute, just dwell for a little? Yes. I know okay. we're in the public hearing section. I didn't want to ask anything, but if you can just leave it up for a little bit longer. Yeah, I just feel like it's sort of pertinent to the public hearing because it's essentially submitted for that. Whoops. So. Can you see it? Let me make it bigger. Uh, I'm interested in the map mostly. There you go. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Khan, if I can speak, because I created that map. What you see highlighted in yellow, uh, this is all within the same tax map that the uh, proposed restaurant is in. Uh, if you see where that red number five is uh, for the mm -hmm. tax map, uh, the parcel where we're located is number 50, just below that. Uh, okay. the, most, uh, the closest neighbor is currently vacant. That's directly across the street on Clifton Park Road. Uh, anything that's highlighted in yellow, those are uh, people who have supported the petition. Um, anything that's in white does not necessarily mean they did not support the petition, but I didn't ring doorbells. I didn't try to intrude on people. Yellow is just people who were out in front of their homes and I was willing to, or not willing, but able to, uh, to speak to them. Uh, I will tell you that this includes 25 parcels of, of the 62 within this tax map. Thanks for the information. Sure. I'm okay, Laura. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, 
So I'm just gonna, like I said, start in order that I receive them. And when I get to one person that I think is on the line, um, they can jump in. So the first notice that I received on November 5th from the Niskayuna Co-op Market states, Dear members of the Planning Commission and Zoning Board of the Town of Niskayuna, we received notice of the November 9th hearing regarding the application submitted by Thomas Nicky for a site plan review and special use permit at 2207-2209 Knott Street East in the town of Niskayuna. The property under consideration is a neighbor of the Niskayuna Co-op located within the, within the same CN Commercial Zone Neighborhood Zoning District and the Town Center Overlay District. The Niskayuna Co-op has a long history of supporting our community, including our neighboring businesses. We appreciate the benefits brought to the entire community by local small businesses, and we look forward to having this new neighbor. Warm regards, Beth Greenwood, Co-President, Board of Directors, and Sarah Belaski, Co-President, Board of Directors. Um, the next notice is from Ann Thornton. She writes, um, just wanted to say that the proposed small neighborhood bar restaurant for the Co-op Plaza sounds like a wonderful addition to the neighborhood, an opportunity to create more of a heart Main Street feel to Old Niskayuna. I would only add that the overall look and feel of the place will certainly go a long way to enhance the neighborhood and I would be in favor of anything the town could do to encourage a positive outcome in that regard. Thank you for all the work you do. Warm regards, Ann Thornton, 1401 Via Del Mar. Um, the next letter is from Ms. Georgiana Carney at 1465 Via Del Mar. My name is Georgiana Carney and I live at 1465 Via Del Mar. I have lived in my home for 31 years. My house borders Knott Street, so I will be looking out my window onto the newly proposed bar and grill and I have many questions regarding this proposal. I guess my first question for all of you is why in 31 years I have spent more time at planning board meetings than any other meetings in the town. Why isn't it possible for me to feel comfortable with that, my, that the members of the town board will speak for me and protect my home and neighborhood? Why do my neighbors and I have a feeling that we will need to watch everything you do in order to protect our homes? As I looked at the agenda, I have to admit that my next question was regarding occupancy. How big is the bar itself? How many could be seated at the bar? Would there be tables in the bar area? How many tables are in what is considered the restaurant and takeout area? This seems like a large omission from the plan attached to the agenda. So I went back and I looked at the planning board meeting itself online and lo and behold, the planning board had a different plan to look at than the public during the meeting. It was sent to them by a follow-up email. Since the planning board does not publicize its minutes until late the Friday before the next meeting, it seems to me you should at least amend the agenda attachments to include what the planning board is really looking at during its meeting. It should also include emails sent to the board of any relevant information. I looked again today and still no change for the public to look at. Also, and looking again at the meeting video, I found that you decided to hold a public hearing on this subject at the next meeting. Once again, I received no notice of this public hearing. I know someone is going to say that I don't meet the feet requirements or some other excuse, but it's something that is going to be outside my home's window. This is Niskayuna, not New York City or downtown Albany. It is very easy to see who this is going to affect and let them know what is going on. If a neighbor hadn't told me about the proposal, I would be completely unaware of what is going on in my neighborhood. Not what I expect of a small, family-oriented town like Niskina. Not what I expect from my town officials who are supposed to be protecting us. So here is exactly what you expect from the pesky neighbors. I have questions. Seating. By my count, off of the online sketch of tables and the bar, they will have 10 seats at the bar, 4 tables in the bar area, which means 16 people, and 6 tables in the restaurant area, which looks to be 24 people in that area. That is a maximum of 50 people to be seated and does not include employees. Parking. According to the write-up that came with the agenda, this establishment will only require 6.54 parking spaces. You need to look at seating for 50 people, the employees, and the tenants above the building who usually park on the south side of Knott, which will be in a sidewalk once the county is done. And also don't forget the people who are pulling in for the takeout. Maybe it would be a good idea to look at the real parking situation, not just use a formula. And while you're accounting, please also take into consideration Maria's alterations, Lang's Pharmacy, Niskuna Wine and Liquor, and the future tenant for the space that was occupied by the Right Touch, the Parcel Post Store and Computer RX. Side Street Parking. The side streets of Via Del Mar, Clifton Park Road, and Crescent Road were not built for people to park. The people who purchased homes on these streets did not did so thinking they were moving into a residential area, not a parking area for overflow from a commercial area. 
The businesses on that street have always respected our streets and our privacy. Do we have ever have overflow? Yes, we do. But it is for things like holidays where people are picking up orders from the co-op. The co-op Co-op employees park in Villa Lamar at those times, and we all understand and never complain. However, we have never had overflow parking planned by our town boards, and I'm sorry to say that is what this plan looks like with 6.54 parking spaces as your guideline. Handicap access. Will a handicapped person in a wheelchair be able to move from the bar area to the restaurant area without having to go outside and around the building or back in on the restaurant side? The drawing submitted only showed stairs between the two sections. Also, will both live lab laboratories be handicap accessible or just the one on the restaurant side as the plan shows noise in nice weather i like most of my neighbors to keep my windows open i like most of my neighbors like to keep my windows open i am not looking forward to having to keep my windows closed and air conditioning on so i don't have to listen to loud voices and cars starting and stopping with door with car doors closing I know it is not Mr. Nicky's intention to have an establishment that causes a lot of noise, but he cannot control his patrons when they arrive and when they leave. It is a fact of life. Bars and restaurants cause noise. Lighting. I would rather not the one side of my house lit up even further than it already is, but I am sure that if some, that is something we will discuss if and when this change is approved. Future outdoor seating. During the planning board meeting, there was discussion of possible outdoor seating in the future. If I don't want noise and I don't want increased lighting, I'm sure you can figure out what I think of outdoor dining without me even having to comment. Comments about bringing life to the area. This comment was made during the last planning board meeting. I just want to let you know that we have plenty of life on this side of Baltown Road. It is called family life. The children's play, people jog, ride bikes, and just walk and greet their neighbors. No, it is not nightlife, and that is the way we like it. Just as you all do in the areas of Niskuna you live in. Please stop trying to turn this into a commercial hub. This is not what old Niskuna is or was ever planned to be. I have the honor of being a resident when the comprehensive town center plan was developed. The town hall was moved to Knott Street East from the corner of Baltown Road and Van Antwerp Road, and the post office was moved from Upper Union Street. Niskuna High School was already over there as was what was called the Grand Union Plaza, now ShopRite Plaza. To the best of my recollection, the only reason the west side of Balton Road on Knott Street was ever was even put into the plan was to acknowledge the five or so small buildings along Knott Street that had commercial occupancy on the ground floor. The commercial hub and town center was meant to be on Knott Street East. This type of establishment belongs over on Knott Street East, not in a residential area. Shopping center. In the agenda write-up, it refers to the small building as a shopping center. In many of your meetings, I have heard it referred to as a shopping plaza. Sorry, but I think Colony Center and Crossgates would not agree with your terminology and neither would Newton Plaza and Latham. It is my opinion this is a small group of separate unconnected old buildings in the middle of a residential area. In no way does it rise to the terms of plaza or mall. Learn from recent examples. Although it is in Schenectady, the planning board and town board members would do well to discuss the Schenectady, what happened on Keys Ave when the newly remodeled city square opened. It is a lesson that should be studied before proceeding with this plan. Check how many times the police had to come to that establishment for some noise complaints and daily for complaints about parking, blocking driveways, etc. And they had their own parking lot and not sharing with other businesses and apartment dwellers. In conclusion, having owned a bar and grill on Long Island and having had a liquor license in my youth, I want to be sure that you understand that I am not against such an establishment. I, too, would enjoy a place to have a glass of wine and somewhere to eat with friends. However, this is not the right type of establishment for this area. This belongs in the ShopRite Plaza or on Union Street, both of which I believe have vacancies and ample parking available. I am sure the rental terms would not be as favorable as the Langs, but that is because it is where this type of establishment belongs. The next letter is um, from Holly Clark and Edwin Eagleston. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to, to respond to your notice of public hearing about the request of Thomas Nicky to obtain permission to open a restaurant at the above captioned address. As the owner of the property located at 1524 Clifton Park Road, adjacent to the proposed restaurant, I'm very concerned about the amount of traffic and necessary parking that would be created by this addition to the neighborhood. There are many students attending local schools who walk in this area, and I'm very concerned for their safety. Additionally, in the time of pandemic, people traveling to the site could bring an exposure to COVID-19, no small issue as we work to keep our families safe. 
I would certainly appreciate you responding to my correspondence and addressing my concerns. The next email is from Eve Kaufman, and she, she writes, I reside on Regent Street with my husband, and we would so appreciate the addition of a neighborhood restaurant and bar, one to which we could walk and meet friends and make friends. The fact that the prospective owner is also a Niskayuna resident speaks to their commitment to help our community grow and thrive. Their proposed hours don't compete with the other businesses in the immediate shopping hours, but extend the hours that people are enjoying the available options. Please consider approving this resolution. Eve Kaufman. Um, Next letter from Portia Zwicker. Hi, Laura. I wanted to voice my support for Thomas Nikki's proposed broken in at Notch Street and Clifton Park Road. We have long needed such a place. Thanks. Portia Zwicker. Um, next email is from McCair Cognetti. Good morning. My name is McCair Cognetti, and I reside at 2309 Niskuna Drive with my family. I just wanted to express my full support of the proposed construction of the restaurant at 2209 Knott Street. Knowing Tommy Nicky and his family personally, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that the Broken Inn will be a great addition to Niskiuna businesses. Especially during times like these, our communities mean more to us than ever before. Having a locally owned and operated restaurant in the heart of old Niskiuna just makes sense. This will not be a flash in the pan, poorly run and managed restaurant. This will be a rock solid business frequented by locals and visitors alike for years to come. Bringing people together will undoubtedly be important once again, hopefully soon. The, this proposed restaurant will add to the landscape of Old Niskiuna by blending a, dec a decades-old family neighborhood with new vitality. There is a very clear demand in Niskiuna for quality food and beverage with reasonable pricing that is best of all locally owned. And Thomas Nicky is the best person to bring that to Niskiuna. Please approve the proposed site plan so that work can begin I thank you for your time, McKay Cognetti. This uh, next email is from Chris and Josena Turner. Greetings. We are in favor of the Nikki proposal for a restaurant adjoining Lang's Pharmacy. The proposal is well thought out and seems to have an awaiting customer base. Regards, Chris and Joe Turner, 1569 Dean Street. Okay, so I believe is Daniela Cena on the call to speak under um, the public hearing. Daniela, Sina. Um, okay, we can come back to you, Daniela, if you're on the call. Um, if you're on the phone, sometimes you have to press star six. Um, if there's a, if you're on mute, sometimes you have to unmute yourself. But I did note that in her email, after she asked for the login, she wrote, looking forward to today's meeting. We're very excited about the new restaurant. Um, do you know, Laura, do you know what number she is? What phone number? Is she still online? Huh? Do you know what the phone number she is? Is she, is she online still, do you think? Well, I don't see her name, but people sign in with different names. Okay. I'll double check stuff and double check my email when I'm done reading. I know there's some people that want to speak. Um, my next comment is from Michelle Lansing. She is at 1468 Via Del Mar. Who members of the town planning board and department. Living on Via Del Mar can be tiring. Like anyone else reading this letter, I simply want to live safely and peacefully in the community where I choose to live. And yet, because I live on the edge of a small commercial island in a sea of residential properties, I am on constant high alert for the next project that could take that away. Over the past 24 hours, I have read a slew of online comments wishing Mr. Nicky and his proposed Not Street project well, restaurant project well. While many of those well-wishers do live in Old Niskuna, many do not. Of those who do, I can assure you that most, if not all, do not live in direct view of the proposed establishment. Their kitchen and bedroom windows will look will not look out at the bar. Their yard will not be filled with the sound of con of congregation. Their streets will not bear the weight of increased traffic. Mine will. Despite the many references as such, this plaza is not a town center. It is a series of four buildings allowed to operate commercially in a densely populated residential neighborhood. If you are looking for a center, please do me a favor of crossing Baltown Road and looking at the undeveloped plaza the town envisioned two decades ago 
for the Mansion Square development that promised a better shopping experience. Lead people to the plentiful parking and orchestrated traffic measures of these deliberate plazas, but please, please stop referring to this small strip of building as the life, but uh, as the lifeblood of our community. It is not. I strongly suspect that you will pass Mr. Nikki's project. It appears to have the majority support. And if that is the case, I would like to ask you and the residents of Niskiuna to show me and my neighbors the respect of remembering this neighborhood is our home. The street is where we live, walk, play. It is our center. And if you choose to frequent Mr. Nikki's establishment, please be respectful of those who houses you walk by and who streets you guide by. Mr. Nikki stopped by my home on Sunday afternoon for nearly 30 minutes. He, my husband, and I spoke about the project and our concerns. We discussed the insufficient parking, the traffic patterns, and the late hours, and we agreed these are issues for the town. I truly appreciate that he had the respect for this neighborhood to walk its streets and talk to its residents. He didn't have to do this, but he did, and that makes me hopeful for a positive connection. Now the onus is on the town planning department and board. How will you address the parking, lighting, noise, and street safety issues? How will you protect the integrity of our community? How will you show the residents of Via del Mar that we matter as much as those who live in your own neighborhoods? How will you be respectful? Frankly, you have started with a notification of this project, but I did not receive one. Despite the fact that this project will literally be within my constant view, I did not hear from you. I imagine that you will cite a 200 foot notification policy. And if so, let me say that I find your lack of consideration disrespectful. Thank you for your time. Michelle Lansing, 1468 Via Del Mar. Next letter is from Ms. Gail King. Gail King, Old Nisuna. Where are you people? I just spent a year trying to get my one room hair removal business approved for 2220 Crescent. Moving my decades old business from 2215 Knott Street has not been a pleasant journey. Reason for the move, the County of Schenectady has plans to make it almost impossible to get to the business on Knott Street. Lands now being parking will become another lane of traffic. Intelligent government and elected officials do not have their first group. 80 foot wide of blacktop. I am not against growing up to sit around drinking wine, etc. Fun. I am not against growing up walking home after drinking, but remember, we don't have sidewalks. Um, I am against the new business of 1308 square feet that plans for 40 people to sit down, being told they can park in front of private homes and businesses until 11 p.m. every night. Let's look at the chart for needed requiring required parking spaces. Co-op has 13,200 square feet, requires 66 parking spaces. The newly created space has 1,308 square feet, requires seven spaces. The theory logic being seven people in a restaurant at one time. Not enough to fill those 40 seats on their map. Not enough to share with business neighbors. First, to give us more parking, not less, you have to talk to the county state into putting the multi-million dollar not street highway project around the happy business party people. I'm willing to talk about this. Also, Ms. Kiuna needs storm drains at work. Gail King. And then I know I saw him. We just muted you, Ron. Sorry, because um, it's distracting. I think if you're not on mute and somebody is, is talking, it's the video cuts back and forth. But Ron McCard, do you want to talk under the public hearing? You have to unmute yourself. OK. Am I okay now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, Tom. So uh, I'm a builder like you are. And um, I appreciate you doing this, especially this time with the COVID going on and everything. Uh, a lot of restaurants in our area are uh, really hurting now. Uh, Tom, have you ever, um, I know you have a place in Las Vegas and everything. Have you ever ran a restaurant before? Have you, I know you did projects and everything around the different uh, communities. Uh, have you actually ran a restaurant before? Ron, Ron it's, uh, this is a public hearing. So would you yes. please just address the board with your comments? Uh, Mr. Nick, Nicky already uh, gave an overview of the restaurant and it's also included in the packet online. So we'd love okay. to hear what you have to say, please. Yeah, but I said that. Okay, well, fine. Well, one of my uh, main concerns is the parking space. Uh, I actually went over there today and I took a number of pictures of the front of the building, the back of the building, and the side of the building. So um, I'm just concerned. I know uh, Tom is going to put in a, a soft ice cream stand on the side when the weather gets better and everything. So I'm just wondering where these people are going to park. That's one of my main concerns. 
Uh, I'm wondering what time is going to do when the, 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 the city or that, what do you call it? Not the city. Um, the, yeah, people who are going to propose uh, um, the, the new road that, that, that is going to go through in front of the co-op and everything. So all the designs, all the designs have been gone with and approved. Uh, so when this is going on, I don't think anybody's going to be able to park in front of these buildings. Not only see, uh, not only um, the broken in, the barber shop, which is was the barber shop. So any of that, I'm just wondering what Tom uh, plans to do with these park people when this project is going on. Um, where are those cars going to go? I think somebody said that um, you need six and a half parking spaces uh, for if you have, I think, full capacity at the bar and also the restaurant. I um, think you might have more. Uh, I realize I, I'm I live close by, so I can walk to your place. Um, so again, my my concern is, and I'm glad to see this, but um, again, the parking. And I don't want the parking to go on to Vio del Mar, Valencia, uh, Clifton Park. Uh, can I ask the board, maybe uh, the green space set is right across the street from this proposed uh, broken in. Who owns that? And why can't that be made into a more of a parking spot? Uh, does anybody know the answer to that on the board? So directly across the street, there's a lot of some somebody mows that all the time, so um, so it'd be on the corner of what uh, Clifton Park, I believe. Yeah, that's private ownership, but uh, we'll, we'll listen to your comments, sir. Okay. We'll, okay, I understand. You're just looking for more uh, input. Um, so um, you know, that's you know, my only comment. I'm very worried about the parking space. That's it. How it's going to go. Uh, onto the other road, Crescent Road, Clifton Park, uh, and that's it, you know. Um, I understand Tom uh, is a builder and does no day. I went around the back of the building. There's quite a bit of uh, brick work, block work and stuff, but that's up to him and he must know that because he's gonna invest quite a bit of money uh, shoring up those walls and stuff like that. Uh, but that's up to him. Um, I guess that's all I have to say, guys. Um, thank you for letting me uh, speak, and um, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yep. Appreciate it. Anybody else, Laura? So uh, that's all I have on my list. If we just you can just open up to anybody else on the call now. Okay. Is there anyone else on the call wishing to be heard uh, regarding the uh, public hearing for twenty two zero seven twenty two zero not nine not street? Anybody else? Uh, hey, Laura, we have uh, Daniela and Steve Cena. Great. Yeah, go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, we're super excited about this project, my wife and I. Yeah, we're, we're super excited about this. Um, we understand the concerns about parking. Um, from what we've gathered from the different plans, it looks like there's more than ample parking uh, for the project. And, you know, what I really liked about this project was the fact that Tom, his vision is to create a place where people can walk within the community and have a place to go for a nice meal, uh, an ice cream. I know our kids are really looking forward to the opportunity for soft serve ice cream in the summer. Um, so for us, we think this is a tremendous opportunity that's going to tr create tremendous value to our community. Uh, we're really excited at, at Tom's approach. We feel that uh, what he has done and how he has presented this to the, to the, not only the board, but to the community at large has been very cooperative, very open, um, very clear, very easy to understand, and ultimately very easy to support. So we're really excited and we really support this project. Okay, thank you, thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard regarding the uh, public hearing? Anybody else online? This will be the last call for the public hearing. Okay, hearing no one else, uh, 
thank I'd like to thank everybody for their comments. You know, we have uh, you know e emails, letters, and um, what we heard tonight uh, live. So we appreciate everybody's input. Uh, we do have a resolution uh, tonight recommending recommending uh, that the town board grant a special use permit. This will get uh, if that happens. If we move it forward, you'll have another opportunity to be heard at the town board uh, uh, meeting, a, a public hearing for a special use permit. Okay. All right, so I'll close the public hearing. Thank you. And we'll move on privilege of the floor. Anyone wishing to be heard regarding any planning and zoning matters in the town of Nuskina, please uh, state your name and address for the record. We'd love to listen to what you have to say. So privilege of the floor is open. You receive any letters for privilege of the floor letter, uh, Laura, or uh, emails? Not specifically for privilege of the floor, no. Okay. All right, hearing no one and uh, having no uh, input for privilege of the floor, we'll close privilege of the floor. And we have no unfinished business tonight, so we're going to move right to new business. Under new business tonight, we have two uh, resolutions. I'm going to flop the order of them because I want to go in a numerical order that the resolutions uh, will be recorded. So resolution number two on the agenda is actually resolution 2020-33, a resolution for sketch plan approval for a four-lot subdivision at 2627 Troy Road for Vice Salon Properties. That uh, resolution has been posted to the website and was available to the public, but I will uh, please, um, summarize it. It's somebody we have to mute there. Somebody's on. Okay. Okay. Um, so 2020-33. Uh, Resolved that this planning board and zoning commission does hereby classify this sketch plan as a minor subdivision as defined by chapter 189 of the town of the code of this unit. And be it further resolved that the Planning Board and Zoning Commission does hereby grant sketch plan approval for the concept subdivision drawing entitled Sketch Plan Prepared for Street Number 2627, Troy Schenectady Road, Town of Niskuna, County of Schenectady, New York, by Advanced Engineering and Survey and PLLC, dated September 10, 2020, revision number five, entitled Revision Lot 4 Driveway Entrance, dated 11 20 with the following conditions. One. The open space shall be dedicated to the town of Niskun with a deed restriction that shall remain forever wild. Do I have a motion on the resolution? Uh, I guess it would be Mr. McFarland. Uh, yes, Chairman Walsh, I, I move for adoption of the resolution. Okay, thank you. Move for adoption by Mr. McPartland. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Oster. And discussion. Anything, Mr. McPartland? Um, just, uh, I guess, uh, a couple updates to the plan that um, um, I'd like to highlight. First of all, um, the lot lines have been slightly redrawn to show a, a bit more land on the northern end of the parcel being um, deeded to the town of Niskayuna, as highlighted um, in your review of the, uh, the resolution um, it, it, to remain forever wild. Uh, secondly, um, the, whereas the access to proposed lot number four is currently off of Route 7, um, the plan now shows access um, proposed onto Shannon, off of Shannon Boulevard instead. Um, I, I believe this was a, a, very, uh, a very wise choice um, by the applicant and um, um, further supports the these these this subdivision um, being uh, of, a, of completely residential nature it makes all four lots more more desirable and saleable um, uh, but as, as it relates to classifying this as a minor subdivision and um, granting preliminary sketch plan approval um, I'm very happy with the plan that we have before us Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McPartland. Is that it? Anybody else have any comments regarding the resolution? You know, I just like to state, state that, uh, you know, this is a sketch plan. So this kind of gets it going, kind of locks it in so that uh, we can go forward. It's not, you know, final approval. So there's still a work in progress. We know we've heard some concerns from the neighborhood. Uh, there's only four lots. As you all know, it started out as five lots as a major subdivision. We're down to four with all access off of Shannon Boulevard, as Mr. McPartland has stated. Um, I know there's some concerns still 
uh, but there is a, a good chunk of, uh, of, of space that will be dedicated to the town and possibly turned over to Nature Conservancy as a result of this. Um, um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, the applicant will do a good job here. So um, I'll support this. Anybody else have any comments? Okay, Mr. Henry, you please call the roll. Mr. LaFlan. Aye. Mr. Khan. Aye. Mr. McPartland. Aye. Mr. Darpino. Aye. Mr. Oster. Aye. Ms. Gold. Aye. Chairman Walsh. Aye. Okay, the resolution passes and the sketch plan uh, is approved uh, to allow this to go forward. Uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, the other resolution we have tonight is resolution 2020-34, a resolution to make a recommendation to the town board on a special use permit for a tenant change at 2207, 2209 Knott Street. Uh, and I'll summarize that resolution, which was also posted on our webpage. Further resolved that this planning board and zoning commission hereby recommends that the town board grant a special use permit for a restaurant at 2207, 2209 Knott Street, subject to the final site plan approval with the, and with the following conditions. One, the facade upgrade shall be referred to the architectural review board. Mr. DiArpino, do I have a motion on the resolution? Uh, so move. Resolutions moved for adoption by Mr. DiArpino. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, second by Ms. Gold, and we can have some discussion. Mr. Chairman, Mo yes. Oster, I, I, I would just like to ask a question because in just in preparation, I missed last meeting, but just in preparation for this meeting, I did come across an article about a previous establishment that I think had been operated by Mr. or maybe it's still being operated. Maybe it's a different Thomas Nicky, but I guess I'd like to have him clarify um, about certain things that had to be signs that had to be taken down in his establishment in Hoosick Falls? Sure, that's uh, not my restaurant, number one, but I am familiar with the story. Okay, that's not your, that's that's the article that referenced your, had referenced, in the time Junior had referenced it being your restaurant. Correct, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a junior, I have a different middle name, but my father who opened our restaurant business has his establishments and I have my okay. own. So it's a different, so it's a different, different person. That's right. Wanted. Correct. Okay. All right. That's why I wanted to ask the question before I sure. before I got into any uh, because obviously it was very it was somewhat disturbing. The same town that would would approve a Holocaust memorial having the sign about a gas chamber. So, but it's not you. So, okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Oster. Other discussion. I, I guess I'll uh, I'd like to say that you know thank thanks to the public for your input. We do appreciate it. Uh, you know. Uh, Basically, uh, this resolution will move it forward to the town board. And again, you'll have another opportunity to be heard and the town board will have the opportunity, obviously, to make a decision of whether they feel this is appropriate, this application. Um, uh, the biggest concerns we hear, you know, are, you know, typical concerns that you would expect for this type of establishment, noise, lighting, parking, uh, nothing new there, right? Now, uh, looking at the, uh, and this might be a question for Laura, taking a look at the, uh, um, the schedule for neighborhood commercial um, you know, again, uh, the quotation that's uh, one parking spot per 200 uh, uh, square feet of area, and that's where the approximately six point, basically seven parking spots comes from that are required for the restaurant. But the assumption is there um, on that part of the schedule is that the parking is shared. And I just want to validate that the uh, parking for the co-op, uh, parking around the perimeter of the, uh, of, of the group of stores or establishments are there. Is there any restrictions on the parking that you know of, Laura or Mr. Nicky? Uh, is it, you know, is this, are all of them part of the establishment, you know, available to this restaurant for parking? I guess better way to put it. Yeah, like that that comment came up many times in the public hearing, and did just wanted to be clear: if it was a standalone restaurant, it has a different. It has a different parking requirement. So seven spaces isn't intended to serve, you know, a 30 seat restaurant. It's in it's intended to show, you know, in combination with, you know, the shared parking of that 
surrounding, you know, all of the shared parking that are pooled with the businesses um, with the understanding that it was shared and that, you know, there are differing hours of operation. Um, what complementary types of uses that, so you don't have a sea of asphalt um, for worst case scenario, but you do have enough for regular operation of all the businesses. So it's, yes, that is a really important clarification it is shared parking across um, all of the businesses. Right. Can I address that? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Dickey. In regards to parking, because I have walked the neighborhood now and talked to uh, well over 100 people in the neighborhood, and this is a legitimate concern and a concern that I would have also, especially if I lived where uh, Ms. Mrs. Lansing lives, uh, Georgie Ann, I'm sorry, I'm taking notes here, uh, also on Via Del Mar. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know her last name, but it is a concern that I would have as well. Um, in regards to parking, uh, and the ability to share parking, which you're talking about, uh, I was delighted that the Niski Una Co-op uh, showed our support. And, and I was out there earlier tonight. Uh, I took some video of what the parking situation looks like at 6.15 p.m. Um, and I shared it with Laura. I don't know if that's anything that uh, uh, you would want to uh, see or share. But um, my, I wholeheartedly would not be making an investment if I didn't think that I could serve my patrons. And that goes beyond the things I can do within the four walls. That includes the ability for them to either walk conveniently to or drive and park in or near uh, near the restaurant. Um, no, I think that as the town code is, is, is written, uh, I, first of all, I don't know what a point something parking space looks like. Maybe that's a motorcycle parking space. Uh, but, we always ground up, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but no, I, I would uh, uh, wholly agree with everyone who's in opposition that we're going to need more than 6.3 parking spaces to functionally handle our patrons. Uh, there are 115 parking spaces shared. If you uh, take into account what's at co-op and in front of this space here and around the corner, I don't know what the final construction project with the county is going to look like, but I am uh, completely confident that we do have enough parking for our patrons, considering that there are hundreds of people within walking distance who want to come and support this place. And I, I, to that end, I will tell you, uh, as I'm listening to the, the notes that Laura was reading and the letters that were sent in and, and the people who called in, uh, I only know one of those people. There's not anybody else who called in or wrote in in support that I have any familiarity with whatsoever. Um, all the more reason I'm excited for this project and in terms of getting to know my neighbors, I think there's some great people um, and I'm glad to have their support. Even the ones who I don't have their support, we have open dialogue, which I think is, is, is fantastic. It's, it's, uh, uh, you know, it galvanizes why I want to be here in this neighborhood. Um, but as it relates specifically to parking, for us to be able to handle a 48 capacity space with staff, et cetera, uh, being able to share the space that's in co-ops parking lot, everything in front of the co-op, in front of the nail salon, in front of the office space, in front of the gift shop, in front of the liquor store, in front of our space, Lang's Pharmacy. Um, is it uh, what I would say a, a surplus in the way that you're going to have uh, in a, a, another area, perhaps, like Latham or Albany that were referenced in a letter? No. Uh, is it adequate? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And so and my question is, again, and I... It's shared parking. How is how is that formal, uh, you know, formally captured? Is it in a, the lease agreement? Is it is it just uh, historic? I mean, how do you, how do we how do we validate that you know you can use any of those parking spaces? Is that uh, been told to you by um, someone? I mean, I, I just need to understand that. Sure. Well, the the pharmacy was happy when we excuse me to answer you directly. I don't have a written document that says this is your designated parking for your business exclusively. Um, I'm not sure who in this plaza may or may have may or may not have that, but I don't have that. Um, I do have uh, the support of probably the most respected businesses in this community who have told me that they are happy to share their parking with me because there's a synergy between our businesses. Um, so if you're looking for something pen to paper that says you have spots number one, two, three, and four exclusively for your space, it's not something that I can provide to you. But if you want to take the word of, you know, 50 years of pharmacy and 60 years of grocery, then that we've got. Yeah, I'm not looking for exactly what spaces. I guess I'm just looking for something that says, you know, all, all the establishments located there have shared sure. parking. That's all, sure. you know, because that's obviously important to the public. It's important yeah. to us. It's important to your business. And, uh, uh, and if we, you know, if we have to follow up with that, again, uh, it's going to go to the town board. I think we should, you know, somehow make sure that uh, 
uh, we don't just say that that it's it's a fact reality that the parking is in, indeed shared. Okay. So I will I will tell you the the specific tax lot building, if you will, where this space is located. Everything is closed at 6 p.m. and this building alone has just about 20 parking spaces around its two sides. Yeah, I understand. And, and as Laura mentioned, also, if this was a standalone, if you know, if it wasn't shared parking, if it was a standalone, it'd be uh, uh, per uh, 50 square feet. So it'd be on the order of 27 parking spaces would be required for this establishment Correct. versus the seven that are called out because you have shared parking. OK, Correct. now, is there something that you'd like me to provide to you? Well, I, I, my personal opinion is I think it would be great to have something, uh, a, a, some kind of a statement or a letter from, you know, from the other uh, stakeholders down there that they understand that we're going to be, you know, parking there. Again, uh, to your comment, in 615 or so, sure, the co-op parking lot probably could handle the capacity on its own, uh, as long as everybody's okay with that. And, uh, sure. it, it, you know, so yes, it would be good to follow up on that. I'm sure the town board would also appreciate that. Sure. Uh, Okay. Does anybody else have any comments? No, I'm just going to reiterate that, Mr. Walsh. I think that's consistent with some things we've done in the past with shared parking. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. Just a couple of quick things. So some of the um, concerns about the neighbors on the Via Del Mar side and the south side, Laura, in the in the new plan that the county is doing on the road, is there going to be some kind of a tree line um, from like the, that interrupts the view between, let's say, Via Del Mar and where uh, this uh, proposed restaurant might be, will be? Or um, I mean, not to the extent that the co-op owns the parking lot adjacent to Michelle and, Ms., you know, Ms. King owns the green space adjacent to um, mm -hmm. Georgiana. So if you're, if you're thinking like, is the county gonna landscape for the closest residents on Villa Del Mar, the only thing, that the county could do would be all the way on Knot Street. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know. I mean, I and there may be like, there, yeah. there may be some opportunities for street trees. I did get the most recent plan. But, um, you know, as far as like a full landscape buffer along Knot Street, I think, um, no, just the opportunity potentially to put some landscaping um, and some street trees like along Knot Street, yes. Yeah, I mean, my question was just, basically what is on the current com county's plan relative to some kind of landscaping on that street um yeah let me let me see if i can get So to the extent that these, you know, these plans haven't gone out to bid. And so like a lot of times landscaping and stuff is the very end of them. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I, mean, I know that it's going to be nothing better than a draft. But... Right. So like right now, this is, you can't really see a before and after. Like right now, this is actually pavement, right? Because this mm -hmm. is where cars... <laughs> contest but illegally park in the county right away so i mean there is green space being added here um and a sidewalk there's a potential you know that we could ask the county um for some some landscaping but it looks and i'm just eyeballing it here as we're all looking at it together like the right of way is pretty tight you yeah. probably wouldn't put the you know the street trees you know on this side of the sidewalk um and then it looks like you probably don't have room without easements to put street trees on the south side of the mm -hmm. sidewalk. Um, but we could certainly work with them. There looks like there's plenty of room within the right of way to put, you know, some trees yeah. over here. But I think, you know. So so I think Laura, maybe, you know, and this is not something that it's in Mr. Nikki's um, uh, purview, but I think if we could just make a note of that when yeah. we're in some of those discussions. I mean, I, I thought Michelle's comment was really relevant that some of the stuff that, you know, the residents are struggling with um, parking and things are really maybe more of a town issue. Um, and that's, you know, some of the things that we're trying to follow up and work with the county on, like, and we've talked about this before, we're specifically looking at this area in front of the restaurant to see if there's ways that we can add some more parking spaces up in here. Yeah. 
because this is such a sea of asphalt, like, you know, maybe we could flip the parking and then make a little green strip here. If we did that, you could have some landscaping between the side of this building and, you know, this house, whether it's vacant or not, um, right. and, and make this whole section more workable and more pedestrian friendly is something I think is really key and needs to be done kind of regardless of what businesses are in there. But I mean, you can definitely hear and understand the frustration. We're not trying to create on street parking. We're yeah, I, to- I had rem- yeah, I had remembered this plot relative to the parking, and I think we do have that opportunity on the parking. So my concern isn't um as high in that one, but I think whatever we can do, like you were just recommending, we should. I was just trying to see in the first question that I asked Here. if there was some way to visually just um, you know, hope it, you know, it, remove some of the impact. Like I think uh, Miss Lansing's property does have a line shot view I think to the, the you know where Langes yeah. is right now and um yeah so anyway that's I, I think we could jot down a note on both of those for when the discussions go with the county I think whatever we can do there can help yep I will make that yep um I I, I did have another question because the the issue Mr. Oster was raising so just to be clear Mr. Nikki do you have any association? So you have no association with that restaurant that he's referring to? That's correct. Is, but is it a relative of yours who owns it? It's not my restaurant. Different person. Same name, different person. Okay, but but not a relative. Oh, yes, it's a relative. Who is it? My father. Okay. All right. I wasn't clear when you'd actually said that. Sure. So, guys, I just want to be careful, like... If it's not him, it's not him. Hold and on, you just I want to be careful when you're going on that. Yeah. I, I understand just, that, Laura. I was asking a question. It got raised. And, I, would also, I would also. Careful. Careful. I'll bring him jump in, but just be careful. I I if you're just looking for a clarification, so we're, we're all set. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other comments regarding the resolution itself? Okay, Mr. Henry, please call, please call the roll. Mr. LaFlam? Aye. Mr. Kahn? Aye. Mr. McPartland? Aye. Mr. Darpino? Aye. Mr. Oster? Aye. Ms. Gold? Aye. Chairman Walsh? Aye. Okay, uh, the resolution passes. Uh, we'll we'll uh, move this on to the town board. Uh, for the public's uh, information, again, the town board will also have a public hearing, so they'll have another opportunity to be heard. If the town board does issue the special use permit, it'll come back to the planning board, and we'll work on uh, uh, details, including uh, making sure we don't have any light pollution that uh, crosses any boundaries or bothers anybody. And uh, we would like something in writing that clarifies that it is truly shared parking there. Uh, and that would uh, also help out the town board and end their decision also. Okay. All right. Thanks. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nicky. And thank you everyone. Uh, and we'll move on on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, we're all done with new business and we'll move on for discussion items. We have uh, a few discussion items tonight. First being 2538 River Road, Kelts Farm, Average Density Development, and uh, Major Subdivision Application. That's Mr. D'Arpino and Mr. McPartland. And I believe what we're going to have tonight is basically an update. Is that correct, Laura? It's, it's, what, what do we have in the action tonight? Just discussion. Well, we just had that those, I think Clark in the um, agenda statement outlined that there's really just kind of three changes that we wanted to make sure were clear to the public. Um, as the, uh, the applicant moves forward with the engineering one, we're removing the road. So well, the applicant is removing the road stub on winter drive, making that a curve. And we're trying to make that a park, um, too. I think we landed on 12 feet for the bike path, um, for ease of, inv- um, emergency vehicles, but also because it's adjacent to the sewer line. And so potentially a back truck will sometimes have to be out there as well. And what's the third one? <laughs> Clark. <laughs> I'll look at it quickly. I'm scrambling to pull up the agenda. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. I've got it pulled up, but I'm going to scroll through it. We wanted to more clearly show sewer easement. And right. uh, one of the things is, um, I think I think um, it was town, town water and sewer that recommended, I forget who recommended that, that um, there be. That was Paul Sheldon from the county. OK. 
Okay. Oh. So the the only county. This is Joel, by the way. The only county comments that we received were they uh, acknowledged that there were town issues, but they said that we should show the water and sewer easements, and we added the water and sewer easements. Okay. Is that all you had, Laura? Pretty much. If anybody has any questions, you know, we've done a lot no. of work there. I mean, we still have to work on the deed restrictions. Um, loan. But really, it's just engineering now, looking at the stormwater. You know, it's just a compromise. It makes a lot of people unhappy. <laughs> but I think that this is where we're going, and it's going to look good. Um, we want to put, you know, as, you know, trees and lupins and whatever we can over here to make it a, just a beautiful entrance to Blatnick Park. And then um, I know that this is a high priority crossing for the town. So that's going to be um, really great when we can get that in and realign so it's not um, like diagonal and perpendicular and a lot safer. Right. And we've got the... Uh, it's kind of nice that we have the support of uh, Linda Kelp and also the uh, Windsor Drive neighborhood and you know, constructing the planning or doing the planning. On okay, and the um, well, there's one other thing. The uh, I think it was Complete Streets. Uh, we're concerned about the grass mat when you come, you know, uh, to access the Celts Farm Road. I believe the name of the road there. Uh, yeah, right where you have your cursor there, Laura. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think the reason for that, um, if I recall, was that we didn't want somebody coming down that back bike path and go right out into the road. And so we wanted to have that break there for safety uh, and, you know, have the bend to continue on the bike path. I know the complete streets thought that that should be paved so that somebody could, could uh, uh, those homes that don't have the bike path in front of their homes could uh, easily get on the bike path. But I think they could drive across a strong grass just as easy, right? Well, what, what we were thinking, rather than it going straight, maybe you could just put a small diagonal paved connection over to here. Um, because the straight thing, I agree with you, like, you're just going to put people out on the street. <laughs> but if you could just do kind of like a diagonal, smaller, you know, like four foot wide connection going this way. then, then Otherwise, you're just going to get a herd trail with, um, you know, they're just going to wear the grass down to dirt. <laughs> Most likely somewhere. Hey, Laura, could you show that again? Because I was looking at the agenda and not not your meeting. Yeah, oh. I think like that, like we have the strong grass here so that you know emergency vehicles can enter and exit easily, um, and that's good because right. you want people to bend this way. But we were saying like maybe you could just do like a small diagonal that goes this way. That's you know whatever ADA standards is, is probably four or five feet wide, and just make that asphalt connection over to here, so that people who are walking from these homes, you know, to get on the bike path, aren't walking through grass because it's sometimes wet and dewy, and you oh. know. Okay. But in general, I think we've uh, we've kind of honed in on this now and starting engineering. You have a town designated engineer uh, that has been hired, correct, Laura? Yeah, GPI. GPI and. Uh, and Joel's provide information to them, right, Joel? So it's uh, off and running. Is that correct? Uh, we're waiting uh, on Tony. that engineering. <laughs> oh, Tony's on the line, but uh, we're waiting on advanced engineering to complete the final design before we hand it off to GPI. Okay. Tony, can you give us an update? I think Tony's muted himself. <laughs> Hi, Joel. Can you hear me? Uh, yep. Oh, there okay. we go, Tony. Yes, Joel, you are correct. We uh, we're progressing through the uh, the engineering, and I think we're at the point right now where we may have to do some some field investigation as in regard to the stormwater. So uh, probably have to do some test pits and some percolation. Um, and as soon as we wrap that up, we'll probably have some drawings that are presentable for uh, for review. Okay. Great. Does anybody have any questions or comments for the applicant? Could we go back to the bike path connection real quick? So this neighborhood is going to have a very, very low traffic count because it's just connected off River Road. So having a little <coughs> diagonal stub off of anything, to me, if it connected to the road or if it didn't connect to the road, you had the strong grass there, 
I don't think it makes much of a difference because I don't think that many, I think you're going to get more pedestrian and bicycle traffic than you are actual car traffic per day in the better months of the year. So if you want to connect it to the road, it would make sense to do it right there at Kelts farm, as opposed to someone just going to go down. They're just going to end up using someone's driveway to access the bike path. So David, you're saying instead of having the grass mat there, just go ahead and make the, put the black top there. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Sure. That, that's what I would, I would think would be reasonable. I, to, I mean, this, I this is clear. not going to have a lot of vehicular traffic yeah. going through here. Hey, Dave, you know, this is Joel. We originally had the, uh, we had that black top and then at a previous meeting, we were asked to take it out because that would give the uh, driver maybe the illusion that that's a road since it's 12 feet wide. But I think Laura's suggestion that we could do like a compromise. We don't have to make that strong grass area. We could pave it, but don't pave it 12 feet wide, pave it four feet wide, but straight like Dave said, Laura, not at a diagonal. Oops. Or, or if you wanted to bring it, bring it back and put more of a curve in it, curving yeah. down to the, to the left. So that mm -hmm. you, you, obviously, yes, you don't want it to be mistaken for a road and somebody driving up it. So the best way to do that would be to maybe break it so that the curve goes down uh, adjacent to lot number 20's driveway. So it's got more of a, a gentle curve to it. <clears throat> That's a great idea. I like that. Tony, you got that? <laughs> yep. Yep, we got it. Yeah, so it'll come down in here, and then you can yes. make that connection so that these guys can hop on. Just like for kids riding bikes and stuff that can't really ride through grass yet because they're too little. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. yeah. That's good. a good idea, good and that'll uh, compromise because people, you know, you don't get the illusion that it's a road, and it's not a straight through shot. That's a good idea. So Tony, take the rate, take uh, make that a radius where we got it at ninety degree angle. Make that a radius, and then put the uh, the crossing straight across on that lot twenty driveway. Beautiful, great. All right, sounds good. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Any other comments on this project? No. Nope. All right. So I wouldn't uh, start the engineering. And Tony, it looks like some good weather tomorrow out there for, for doing some site walks, huh? Yeah, we'll get the uh, we'll get those test pit schedules. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Kevin, I know it's not on the agenda, but can I just make a while well, we got Tony on, on the line talking about 2627 briefly? Yeah, keep it brief. Okay, um, we did that site walk with all the all the neighbors. Okay, and and one of the big concerns is saving as many trees as possible. So, what what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the four corners on all the lots and the location for the houses, and then we'll we'll place in the driveways. But one thing that didn't appear on the drawing that we didn't put on there yet is that uh, I agreed to put a split rail fence across the back of all the lots to delineate the, uh, the town park. So people walking don't, uh, you know, walk into the people's backyard. And Laura, this is kind of funny, but I was showing uh, a friend of mine, we were walking the land and there was three sets of people there and Dart Strader and his wife, <laughs> I ran into them. And they were the only people that had the permission actually to walk there, but um, so Dart Dart was there. That's it, Kev. No, that's we'll great, a, Joel. We're gonna add a split rail fence on there. We're gonna delineate the lot, and then the house locations, and work with the neighbors and Laura, obviously, and tree committee to site the driveways. Yeah, I think that was really key. Patrick showed up, I think, when we were talking about the driveway. So that was really key takeaway from the neighborhood um, meeting was to try and locate those driveways in such a way that it has the least impact to trees and you can kind of maintain the most buffer to Shannon Boulevard. I mean, there's still, like you guys know, there's still a lot of frustration going on with, you know, the original uh, subdivision versus what it ended up being. But I think that, you know, being as sensitive as you can to the trees and we appreciate Joel working on that is really helpful. And the other thing I just wanted to say really quickly is that we had originally called for the public hearing, um, but just to clarify, we can't hold that until we have our secret determination. Um, and the CAC would like to review this project for one more month. So um, we wouldn't be able to call for a public hearing until 
we have that secret determination so that the application is complete. I, I saw that you had it scheduled for December 2nd. Isn't there a meeting before then? That's, that's the next well, meeting? The next um, CAC meeting is December 2nd. Okay. All right. All right. So the, early, the earliest we would have a public hearing then would be uh, late December, early January then. Yeah, like but since, but since I got the preliminary, I can move forward and take the lot, so correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. My frustration with the seeker, and everybody kind of knows this, and you can even read it on the website, is that um, for subdivision, you have to have uh, the state doesn't consider a subdivision application complete until you have seeker determination. Um, and like a lot of times you want to wait and hear public comment so that you can kind of get a sense of what the, you know, what the impacts are to the neighborhood or whatever else you're reviewing for seeker. Um, but they require you to have done that prior to holding the public hearing. Um, so it's like a conundrum and it's super frustrating. Um, we're just working within the constraints of that seeker law. We want to make sure that we've got it right. When, when's the public hearing schedule for then? Yeah, just for clarification, oh, for the CAC meeting is December 2nd, and then there's only one planning board meeting in December. That's December 14th. So the public hearing would be the first meeting in January. Oh, you're killing me. But you do have sketch plan approval, so you can move forward with staking and engineering and stuff like that. Okay. All right. Okay, th thank you, Joel. Thank you, Tony. Laura, as always. Okay, all right, thanks. We, we're all set on River Road, 2538. Nothing further? Colts Farm? Okay. All right, we'll move on on the agenda then to uh, next item, which is 1448 Ball Town Road uh, regarding the um, uh, the hardware store. And this is a relocation of the 1,000 gallon propane tank, the refillable tank storage, and EV charging stations. Um, and that was included in our agenda packet, and I and there was an updated uh, map that kind of showed those locations there. I know this is uh, Mr. Khan and Mr. Laflam were supporting this project, so I guess I'll turn it over to you guys if you'd like to talk about it. Anybody get, did everybody get a chance to take a look at the uh, map? Yeah, yeah. It looks like the island, the shape of the island that the uh, pain, uh, platform is going to be located within. That shape doesn't look any different. That was always. Right. An island, the same configuration that it is now, but the raised platform, and it's going to be raised. Um, how much is it raised? Like, is it six inches or ten inches? Like, Laura, do you know how that is going to? Is there a step up? So sorry, Tony, you're causing some feedback here, but both Tony Mantello can probably speak to the project as well as Thomas Dingley. They're both on the line. If you guys just want to give a quick overview. Yep. Yes, yeah, sure. Tom, I don't want to step on your toes here, but I can. Uh... No, Tony, if you, if you understand the project, go right ahead, please. Okay, very good. The the uh, the parking island is an existing island, and I believe it's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's a six-inch curb. And the, the new concrete slab that will be placed in, in the middle of that island will be flush with, with, the, with the grass, the grade on that island. Okay. Yeah, I just want okay. clarification on that. I wasn't sure if it was raised up and you had, had stairs and there might be a railing that's required as a result of it. No, no. If uh, if if you don't mind, I'll interrupt. I mean, uh, that the, if we're talking about the propane station alone, or are we talking about the charging stations as well? Oh, uh, well, let's, yeah, we're going to talk the about both of those. First. Yeah. Okay, so but I mean, both pads will be fairly similar in elevation. And if they do step higher than the grade itself, uh, I don't see it being uh, greater than six inches above the existing grade of the island. We did cut both islands down because I think there was about 20 years of, of uh, wood chips on there. So uh, we did cut the elevation down to virgin soil, uh, which I think if you stopped over to site, uh, tomorrow you'll you'll see about a foot elevation change from what was existing. So we'll go off of that elevation. We'll place our pad, and then we more than likely will eventually place uh, wood chips and, and a little bit of green area around the 
around whatever concrete is required for both the propane and the charging stations. Excellent. Yep. yep. And the uh, as far as delivery goes, it looks like it's accessible um, all around, so it shouldn't be an issue there, right? Uh, all right, so on delivery, I'm not sure if it was ever uh, relayed to you guys with uh, Nick Costa. Um, I think we changed the delivery from an 18 wheeler back to a you know to a box truck because so we we handle all our own deliveries now with these hardware from the warehouse in uh, in um, I think it's exit exit 12 or exit 18. I can't remember where. That house is but anyway we we take all our own deliveries now so uh what we accommodated for i think in a site plan was for an 18 wheeler and, and we found out we still had enough room uh, to maneuver an 18 wheeler 15 four well 54 footer uh but uh, in reality we will be doing our deliveries in a box van so uh deliveries are, are much less of a concern on that site than they ever were Okay. That's helping right now. That's great. So do we, uh, you know, this is just an update, Laura, about the slight modifications to the site plan. Do we have any action that's required by this board at all? It's, um, it's kind of up to you guys. Typically on the EV charging stations, I just give you an update. And on the propane tank, you typically um, kind of approve them by a resolution. So this is like a hybrid. I am okay with you guys kind of doing a straw poll and letting it be an administrative action okay through building permit or um, for propane, we can bring it back to you for a site plan amendment next meeting. Well, the propane, uh, uh, always the concern with propane is, you know, how does it look? And obviously this is a pretty isolated right. area and then safety, making sure that it's got, uh, you know, the engineered correctly with the correct number of ballard, ballards to, you know, to protect uh, any types of collisions. Uh, obviously, that it's a little tough to see on the drawing that we have now, but I would assume that uh, all that has been taken into consideration, uh, right, Mr. Dingley, as far as uh, safety for Ballard and so on and so forth. Yeah, I tell you, I, I uh, believe we left it up with Nick Costa to give us what was required for protection around that uh, propane station. Tony, you want to respond to that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, we, uh, we 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 coordinated with with the the propane uh, suppliers and the manufacturers on some of their recommendations on the code requirements for the bollards. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it seems I'm like open. on the on the one thousand foot on the one thousand gallon tank, there's seven of them. I'm I'm sorry. Yes. It seems like there's seven bollards for the one thousand gallon tank. Right. Okay. And for the cages, uh, for the propane tanks, you already had three there, right? Yes, they were on all the corners. We, we tried to look at placement of those right bollards so that it would they would be effective from the, you know, against the vehicle impact. L Laura, there's no, yeah, there's no distance requirement for propane and EV charging stations, is there? A distance requirement? That's a good question, uh, well, Mr. Khan. Yeah, I'm just asking. It's, it's a the, common the, sense the, question. Uh, I don't know if there's a code on it. I'm not aware directly of a code requirement, but the the, 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 the propane manufacturer or the supplier indicated uh, some dimensions to us, which we used in the placement of the tank. That, that's a good question, because one of the things we run into, like, with, well, I've run into it, like natural gas is, you know, there's always a relief valve and a relief valve has to be a certain distance from any uh, ignition sources. So I got to assume that on this thousand gallon tank, there must be a relief valve somewhere on it. Um, is, and Tony, maybe, you know, I don't want to, so that's probably something we should just make sure that the relief valve is like at furthest away from uh, any parking spaces or charging stations, if that's possible. Right, um, right. Well, yeah, we, we can look into the code requirements to that a little deeper here and, and just yeah, so that's something some... we'd like to hear back on, I think. But yeah, other that's than that, a good question. I think. Sure. Kevin, Kevin, this is Clark. I, I can verify that one of the building inspectors did look at this drawing and he reached out to a fire department chief to get make sure that the proper um, reference was being cited for the propane tank. But the propane tank next to a charging station is an excellent question, and I'm not sure that was part of the discussion. So yeah. we can go back and make sure that 
that's looked at. Yeah. So, so I guess uh, my takeaway is I think I think we're good, pretty good with uh, with the changes that are, are proposed. Um, and, but let's validate that there's no safety issues, uh, whatever the like, uh, propane gas manufacturers or association, whoever, whatever recommendations they have for the relief valve and distance from any parking spaces, whether it be electric or a um, regular. I'll make sure it's okay. All right, Tony. Yeah, sounds good. If you get us an answer, just I think we're okay with that, everybody. And yes. obviously, and if a concern is identified, then make sure you engineer the concern, uh, the problem away, right? Right. Very good. Okay. All right. The only thing I can think of is there is a distance requirement for propane tanks in the residential zone. It needs to be so many feet from your yard and side yard and that kind of thing. Right. I know because I had to inquire when I got my house. Okay. All right. So um, I don't think we need to do a show of hands or anything. I, unless anybody has any concerns, you can just let us know right now. Otherwise, we'll uh, have the applicant uh, validate uh, the safety requirements for location of the uh, propane tank or any relief valves uh, relative to uh, charging stations or vehicle, vehicle parking spots and get back to us. Uh, I think we're all set then. Okay. Okay. So sorry, just for clarification, um, this is a good enough meeting to have reviewed it and the administration can move forward with the building permit based on the discussion or you guys would still like to do a resolution? Uh, I, I'm okay without a resolution, but I, I'll, you know, make a, it's a recommendation for Mr. Khan or Mr. LaFam. Uh, yeah, I, I'm okay with, a, with it being administrative resolution or be it be pursued with, followed up with an administrative action. Right. But I do want to hear back about the. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we can we can follow up on that and then just bring it back as a report, like the final configuration. Okay, mm -hmm. and the only and you know obviously if there's an issue, then I guess it comes back to us anyway, right? Okay, and you know me, like I just have to say this. Um, I mean the trees in that island were ash trees, and they were dying. Like they, there was no saving them. <laughs> they had to come down. Um, but that was kind of green space, and now you're putting you know EV charging stations, which I'm a big fan of, and propane. So if there's any way to soften that and make part of it green, even if it's like, obviously I don't think you can probably fit trees between the charging stations, but perennials or anything you can do to bring some of the green space back to that island and break up that asphalt, I think that that's something that um, you guys should look into too. Yeah, Laura, so um, you know, just keep in mind that the entire island will not be used for concrete. So uh, especially on a charging station, the actual, concrete pad for those are minimum, uh, probably 12 inches off the asphalt, maybe 14. So we're not losing a considerable amount of green space on that island portion. And then on the propane, uh, we, we'll, we'll definitely do our best to try to dress it up a little bit and put a little more green space in there. And there's uh, there's other areas on, on the property that we want to address anyway. So I'm not sure if we've gotten so far as to give you a a landscaping plan for this project yet, but um, we could certainly afford that once the owner has the time to to uh, really give it some thought. Yeah, we did put that in the resolution that we do want to put a landscaping plan. So I just want to you know, reiterate that it's you know if this is a, if this works better for propane for you guys, it sounds like you know the planning board's okay as long as all the codes are met and we can double check that with building inspectors and engineers. But you definitely want to get some good landscaping out there to talk and whatever you're adding. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Okay. All right, great. So sounds like we've got an open item. Is there any other questions for the applicant or the representatives tonight? How's it coming along? Status? It's uh, it's good. We're finally starting to make some progress. So I'm, I'm hoping the next three weeks will be a good day. And uh, there's an estimated uh, opening date of uh, early December. Is that what I heard? Uh, I think so. I think they want to do a soft opening. Uh, there, we some structural issues we're working on, but uh, other than that, uh, the majority of the repairs and, and major items have been taken care of. So we're still on schedule to start receiving shelving on the uh, 15th or 16th of the month. So uh, I would say uh, you know, we'll be ready for a walkthrough uh, maybe four weeks. Okay. Hey, thank you, Mr. Dingley. And You're welcome. Tony. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate okay. you guys joining in. Thank you. All right.
All right, All right so we got an open item. We'll hear back on that before our next meeting. We appreciate that. And uh, we'll close the discussion on um, 1448 Balltown Road. All right, thanks. Uh, moving on, 2721 Balltown Road, the Aqueduct Animal Hospital. I know uh, Mr. Diarpino, and I believe we have Mr. Ritmo also on the line tonight with us. At least he was earlier. Yep. I'm All here. Right. I'm here. So I guess I'll turn it over to you, David. Okay. So uh, Alex has made it through the, the zoning meeting and updated the plan basically to show all of the buildings that will be eliminated to clean up the site. And one of the other topics that was discussed uh, the past week was the green space out in the front of the building along Balltown Road. And a concept that came up, which I think is worthwhile for some discussion here, would be to eliminate the, the dual entrance that's currently configured there and possibly looking at going into just a single driveway entrance and loading all of the parking onto the north side of the property, allowing the south side of the property and that area that's currently, um, I guess it's like a little bit of a landscape space on the back side of the building could be, could be preserved and there's some mature trees over there, but make it look a little bit more residential instead of having the, the loop um, as you come in currently by justifying like five or six spaces over to the south side and then the other dozen or so spaces onto the north side. So Mr. Henry, I know did some, legwork on that with some conceptual ideas and <clears throat> be a lot less to maintain and probably cheaper in the long run if it was just replacing a little bit of asphalt. Can I see that picture again? Sorry, I was just popping up there. Just because. This is, I mean, this is just conceptual. Clark did that. It's just showing like the pink would be taking the asphalt away and then the green would be a new parking area. Because we were thinking if you're taking the building down already and you got to flatten out, you got to flatten out and regrade. Um, like this is such a mess when you're getting on and off Balltown Road. You could put all of the parking on this side of the building. And then in the future, if you ever needed an area to do, because, um, over time, you know, once the rents start coming in and, you know, things start um, building up there, you might want to add covered parking. You know, you could kind of reserve this area over here for covered parking. Um, but our idea was, because we know that, you know, there's a lot to invest in this building, is that we could conceptually do it in phases. So, like, you could, you know, you could get in, work on the building, and then have a certain timeline to get, you know, the building up to snuff, and then you could have a certain timeline to work on the asphalt so that the overall goal was to make this building look very residential. One of the reasons I think it got a use variance was because you're moving it to a more conforming use in the neighborhood and we talked about that. So if you can get that parking away from being out front of the building, which is um, actually also in itself a pre-existing non-conforming use and tuck it along the side would be super awesome. Oof. I'm glad you drew it in green because that's exactly what it's gonna cost. Yeah. Well, that's why we were thinking the phasing option, because I know I talked to you about that a little bit on the site, you know, on the site um, when we were looking at it, because it's like this green area you've already got in your site plan. We we're just talking like over time as that building evolves and becomes better and better. Yeah, I mean, part of the reason I bought this project was because there was already or not buy, but uh, it was under contract is because it has existing blacktop, which makes it more affordable than adding a massive amount. I mean, that, that that's one of the huge issues of, of, of what would make this a go or not a go. There's only so much I can do to make it. Laura, one question about the, the reconfigured parking that the, that Henry showed is, um, um, does it, a, I, I forgot, I was trying to look to see where the entrances are to the building. Yeah, oh, there is a there is an entrance over on the like the south side of the south building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which we talked about when we were doing the site walk. You know, 
that then, 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 then those customers would have to walk along a long sidewalk and wouldn't have like sort of their own direct parking spaces. But you would eliminate over time, like not with the understanding they couldn't do it like overnight. Like, you know, Alex, we understand. But if you're taking that time to regrade and start, you know, rather than planting a bunch of trees where you could put the future parking lot, like reserve that for future parking and then build that slowly over time through phases. And this actually came up during the, the CAC meeting we had. And I think there was even some provision initially for perhaps covered parking was 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 in the discussion. And, you know, there was no opportunity for that. But the idea came up of could we migrate towards a more residential look over a period of a couple of years as it becomes more financially um, doable um, to Mr. Ritmo. And it, it just kind of jumped out at the CAC a little bit that you have businesses there, Environment One, the SI group, the JCC, that all have very residential driveways. And this building, which we're attempting to migrate towards a more residential look, has a huge paved front yard. And we, we were just kind of looking for any idea to migrate that, that's all. I like the idea of more residential look. I have two concerns. One is what is the garbage management plan? And if we do migrate to the other kind of parking, in the parking scenario, would there be room for delivery trucks to do what they need to? You know, people move in, they rent a truck, but sometimes they have furniture delivered, et cetera. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think uh, we all agree that there's a sea of blacktop in the front and it does not look residential. Um, and I understand your concerns, uh, Mr. Ritmo, uh, about cost. Uh, but I think uh, one of the things we, we get started, I think we're going to cut, cut up some of that blacktop or, or at least uh, define the in entranceway or exit, ingress, egress, right? And I think that was uh, on one of the sketches that we saw before. So reduce some of that impervious surface at a minimum to get started. Um, yeah, I think, you know, but I think what we're also saying is we've got to, you know, look at the long haul. And, uh, and if you're taking down those things and there's an opportunity that, you know, someday you're going to have to repave, you know, that maybe that's not the right spot to repave and to continue on this path, uh, but to migrate the parking to the more residential. So, um, you know, we want to break the bank here, but we also want to um, uh, make this fit with the neighborhood. Uh, and that's, you know, as part of the justification, as Laura stated, for getting the uh, uh, the uh, uh, use variance uh, based on it being a neighborhood type feel. Um, so those red spots, uh, Laura pulled up the drawing there, those, the red on front, I guess that's kind of in the right away or something. Those are going to go away. Yeah. Right? Yes. Like so, little... so right now the road cut, cause that's the discussion I remember was that the road cut was massive. So there's that little U shape in the center, which I would turn into green area. Um, and then the two parking lots on the side where, where I drew grass, that was um, some of the neighbors had concerns of the cars parking basically on the road. So I was going to yeah. eliminate them because obviously, you know, I'm trying to make this project affordable. I'm not opposing or opposed to, you know, the grand scheme. But, you know, to get my feet in the door here and, and you know, try to make this thing, you know, financially work, I, I'm trying to, you know, I guess – meet your needs and meet my needs at the same time. Again, I'm not opposed to the grand scheme, but, you know, if we could do that, you know, a few years down the road where this thing can hopefully start paying for itself opposed to doing it right off the bat and me giving you, you know, much less of a road cut and kind of like a U-shaped driveway, you know, obviously with some parking spots, but it, it gives you, you know, more of a residential feel than it does now. It's just, you know, I get that it's not your grand scheme. All right. All right, we just have to think about how, how we accomplish this, whether we, uh, you know, uh, we have to have site plan approval here, right, Laura? So, um, you know, we got to think with the end in mind and whether it's a phased approach, uh, you know, years or whatever it takes. Uh, one thing we wouldn't want to see you do is, you know, obviously repave the existing one completely. if It's not desirable and spend that money. We'd rather have you, you know, have the plan to uh, to migrate if you got to do some repaving in the future, you know. 
Yeah. Uh, so something to think about how you would accomplish that and still uh, keep costs down so you can get you going here. Um, you know, it sounds like that's where the board's at. Um, as far as everything else goes, I mean, it's, you know, taking down those uh, kennels and outbuildings, whatever, obviously is going to help the site look, you know, fantastic. Um, uh, are, are you at a point now where um, uh, you've met whatever, um, uh, you know, you're ready to uh, go forward with the purchase? Are you waiting on planning board approvals in order to, you have contingencies or is, um, it, okay to, is it okay to ask that? Yeah, yeah, you can ask that. I mean, we're 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 pretty close. Yeah, um, it, I was kind of waiting to see what happens with this one, um, and then we we're gonna move forward. And you know, if not, we we're gonna drag did, it on. Did you ever get an ish, uh, answer regarding the? Um, I think there was a question you had regarding whether it needed to be sprinklered. Did so what I did is I talked to my architect because um, that's I I forget who wrote the email, but I think it was the town building inspector. And he was going to leave it up to her because she's the design professional. So what me and her discussed was that we would double layer um, the second floor to the first or the second floor to the first floor ceiling in the first floor of five eights fire rock <clears throat> and then spray foam um, in between the floor joists. And that would make it so that we wouldn't need any sprinklers. Okay. All right. So what are kind of costs, you know, again, I know we're, you're, we're sensitive and you're sensitive to the cost. Whatever things are hidden out there, I'm just I'm addressing this to the board or to Laura, uh, besides parking, uh, taking down the old structures, um, as far as a site plan. I mean, obviously there's some tree damage now out there as a result of probably the last uh, windstorm we had. Look, um, yeah, Dr. Pike's taking care of that. You know, is there any other things that we could... Um, have a discussion with Mr. Ritmo regarding uh, things to expect from us. I can't think of any landscaping. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking for help here. There yeah. will be landscaping. No. Well, it sounds like the biggest hurdle is is the parking. Is what I'm hearing that. Is it sufficient in that so that he can move ahead? That that he knows that Mr. Ritmo knows at least what the intent of the planning uh, department, you know, recommendation is concerning this. Don't make any permanent uh, changes to that side where it could eventually become a more residential of parking. And it's one of those things that, it, you know, we have some way of revisiting it. You know, if he's able to, um, you know, to make this something he can go forward with and make it profitable. Mm. We could memorialize that in a condition in the resolution for site plan approval. Like we could say, you know, um, the planning board is encouraging over time the parking to be removed from the front of the building and put on the side. And um, so like before, you know, before investing in a, a new parking lot, you know, the applicant shall, you know, work with the planning board to put the parking lot on the other side of the building. You can memorialize that in a condition that way, like it's explored and like the intent for the future of the property is there. Um, and the first step could be the the curve and the removing of those two parking spaces. The CAC did say that they would like to see landscaping along the parking, a little bit more landscaping along the parking lot as is adjacent to the, um, actually the vacant residential lot. Um, so maybe just a little bit more landscaping over there. And then a condition that, you know, we would like to see the parking over time grow behind the building rather than in front. Well, thank you, Mr. Khan and Laura. And Mr. Ritmo, one thing you have to think about then is the future. And, and uh, you know, there's a recommendation about the parking be uh, migrated sooner or later over to the northern side of the building. So you got to think about, you know, what the future holds for the site. I know you had some other thoughts that maybe you might want to expand someday or so on and so forth. But just think about that um, and, uh, and uh, think about the proposal about migrating the park there. And, Make sure you're okay. If you have any comments, you know, I don't want to hit you tonight, but uh, think about it and, you know, get back to uh, the project leads or the planning department or myself uh, with any concerns you have. What last thing we want to do is come up with a resolution for uh, approval uh, that's going to you know, cause you uh, uh, financial distress and maybe not make the project work. That's not our intent. Our intent is to have a successful project and you to have a successful uh, business there with the apartments, but also have something that fits with the neighborhood and, and, uh, and with the surroundings and that's that's all we're trying to do so whatever you can do to help us uh, we'd appreciate it 
Yeah, yeah, no, I and again, I I'm not opposed to any of the suggestions. It's just you know, if you guys can work with me, I'd I'd, I'd be willing to work with you. Which just you know, we're in this together, kind of. Yep. No, we we appreciate that. All right. What what do we have left to do right now uh, on this project, Laura or uh, uh, to see Dave? Is it pretty much uh, uh, getting some more formal uh, documents? Uh, you know. Uh, you know, engineered drawings or, you know, marked up drawings that are uh, of quality? I mean, wh wh where are we at? Well, I mean, technically, this is just a renovation to the existing building mm -hmm. with the removal mm -hmm. of a bunch of outbuildings, right? Right. Is, yeah. is there, I mean, normally we would see, you know, like if it was a, a new apartment building, we would see the floor plans and the elevations, but yeah. it's really a remodel. Right. Well, it's a remodel, but it is, again, a use variant, so it's a little bit different mm -hmm. there, right? How about, uh, like, lighting, you know? Do we need to be concerned about lighting? Um, you, you know, again, Mr. Ritmo, are you going to be adding any lighting in the parking lot or uh, around the building perimeter that might, in, in, you know, encroach on the, the neighbors over on Schraber? I mean, that's always our concern, obviously, is that we yeah. respectful to the neighbors, right? The only lighting I plan on adding is um, just some coach lighting above each entryway. Yeah. Right. Um, Mr. Henry, I know that you, I think you had that sketch. I believe it was you. Um, have you shared that with Mr. Ritmo? Does he have a copy of that? No, no. That, that, and that was just pure conceptual, um, you know, move it towards something that looks somewhat residential. That was not meant to be the design. It was just yeah. meant to be, you know, something a little more residential. Yeah, and I understand that, and we appreciate your help there. Um, I, I know I do. But maybe you could uh, make sure, uh, sure. Mr. Rubino has that so he can at least think about it and evaluate it, okay? Uh, because, if, you know, if, if we end up going to a resolution and we, we do uh, put that in a resolution that we want to have it migrate it to the north side to parking, uh, I'd like to have uh, Alex have the opportunity to take a look at it and give us any, you know, think about it and give us any feedback he's got before we get there, okay? Sure. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your help there, uh, Mr. Henry. Somebody Mr. Clarify? Chairman, he still has. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Leslie. I'm just curious where the dumpster is going to be, or is there another arrangement? I cannot identify it on the map. It's not on my um, computer. I guess, I guess I didn't draw it. I, that's my fault. I apologize. Um, I I guess I can leave that one up to you guys. Um, the drawing that I drew. Um, it's the same one that was posted earlier. Um, I can either put it on the north side at the very end, basically where I'm taking down the existing kennels, or if you'd like, I could put it on the south side um, back towards the building. Well, Thank you, Laura. Uh, yeah. I guess for saying we probably don't want it on the south side for the future, right? Yeah, no. so I mean, if you wanted me to, I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to, um, you know, putting it on the north side uh, right, basically at the end of that red line and, and planting some shrubbery around it or something like that, dressing it up so it doesn't look so terrible. And is that the plan for a, uh, a dumpster for the residents, sir? Yeah, unless you guys would rather me go to trash cans, but I'd, I'd yes. rather not do that. Yeah, it's whatever you uh, you know you uh, ask for, I guess, or recommend. Right? So. Yeah, I mean, a dumpster would, I think, cause a lot less... Um, you know, because obviously we're going to have to roll the, the garbage cans out to Balltown Road. So I think a dumpster would be the best bet. Yeah. And that was another reason of, of leaving that U shape in the front, because you don't want a garbage truck, you know, backing onto Balltown Road. You'd rather give them a little, you know, room to turn around. And it does appear, and according I to raised it. On, um, on Google Images, it looks like there's a dumpster in that location currently. Um, as Aqueduct Animal Hospital, or at least was when Aqueduct was was there. Yeah. Mr. Ritmo, um, do you plan on putting any sort of a signage up, or were you just going to have um, a designated by the the street number? Um, I was going to put some signage in that green area U-turn, but we discussed, I think, in like the very first meeting that that's actually an easement, and I most likely wouldn't be able to um, put signage up. So, you know, putting a number on the building is fine with me. It'd be cool to have a sign, but, you know, it, it, that's not something that's going to make or break me. 
I guess that would be a, up to you guys whether you would want to allow it or not. If I had to go for a, a variance or something like that, then no. How about uh, mail delivery? Mail delivery, there's going to be a um, – uh, oh, geez, why can't I think of it right now? It's basically just going to be one of those big square boxes, you know, towards the building. All right. For those kinds of things that you would mark up the drawing and show is where the dumpster is going to be, where the mail delivery is, you know. You know, okay. Those should all be marked up on there, you know, so we understand. Yeah. David, you had something to say? I cut you off. Good your panel. Actually, Miss Shenfield uh, brought up the signage. Okay. All right. So what? What? So what's next? You got to mark up the drawing and get that to us, Mr. Ritmo. Is that where we're? That's where we stand, everybody. Is that correct? So the next, I mean, the only next step you guys have left is, I mean, if you wanted to, you could call for a public hearing, although I think that the public hearing was held substantially at the zoning board. Um, a lot of people attended and um, almost exclusively in favor of this project. So passionately in favor of this project. <laughs> but procedurally, um, so... you need to do it too, right? This Sorry. meeting went a lot better than the other one. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you ask, Jenkins? Procedurally, we need to do a public hearing, or we can. You do uh, not. No, it. typically we when you, when the zoning board holds it, you guys have not right. held another yeah. one. I mean, can you? But yeah, I was just making sure. I don't think we. Procedurally, you do not. So, I mean, the only procedure procedural set that you have at, at the next juncture is final site plan review. I guess the question would be like, would you like to see more detailed drawings? Like, if Mr. Ritmo has an architect, like, would you like to see, you know, a, you know, just kind of like a final architect? drawing of the plans or um, our engineering department didn't feel like this would need SWIP. They took a look at it quickly. And just because the impervious is kind of being swapped around, um, they were generally speaking fine with it. So it's really just up to you guys. The next step, you know, would just be final site plan. And it's just the, what you would want to see on the drawing. I think it's important to note, like, I think Alex, you should definitely note your plans for upgrading the lighting because that's something we always review for multifamily. Definitely okay. put the dumpster on there. Um, I was just going to quickly look if there's anything else we typically like need to yeah. see for multifamily. I mean, Alex, are, are you planning on issuing a cleaned up drawing? Yeah, this was kind of one of those quick things to. Yeah, no, understood. I, I see that, but I think we should get a something. Yeah, I, I have no problem up. getting you a, you know, a, a real drawing. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to have something that, you know, Real, whatever that means, right? But at least uh, something that's uh, more precise. Again, it shows the uh, uh, the mailbox location, the dumpster location, the um, uh, the uh, what do you call that? Shielding of the dumpster, whether it be uh, you know a, a fence or you know how you're going to do it, so we don't have to look at the dumpster. That's something that we typically do, Mr. Ritmo. It's, we're not picking on you. This is standard yeah, yeah. stuff we always talk about all the time. You know, uh, we need to have that and. Uh, it's something that shows the number of spaces and the delineation of the spaces, which you approximately have now. Parking spaces, make sure we meet the minimum need. Uh, the handles, uh, you know, the uh, uh, residents plus visitors, of course. Um, so all those things uh, are the, just the details so that when we, we attach that to our resolution, you know, in the future, we know what we approved. And, and, and uh, if there's any changes, we know the things that did get changed and that we didn't approve. So. So, so, yeah, we need an updated drawing. Okay. okay. Right. And, like, also, just I mean, we, we usually talk about snow removal, like, just so that you, in your mind, have a space of where you'd be pushing the snow. Probably you wouldn't be tracking it off-site. Um, no. And then just, like you said, if you've already got a kind of a concept plan for landscaping, just add that on there, because that's something we also look at along property lines. Okay. Yeah, is there a um, time frame, Alex, uh, that you're on? Do, do you want to get that to us, or what's what's your uh, sense of urgency? Um, I'd love to get it to you ASAP. Um, you know, I could probably have something to you by the beginning of next week. All right. Do we, uh, it sounds like uh, now I'll, I'll defer to Mr. DiArpino. Do we want to make sure we get that first and take a look at it before we call for a final uh, resolution? Or do we want to call for a tentative resolution? Uh, and then pull it if it isn't adequate, what we receive. What do you think? I think we can do the tentative resolution. Um, they seem to be pretty straightforward items that he can be adding to this. Okay. And with the cleaned up, 
cleaned up drawing if he can turn around within a week and we could look at it um, yep. between us and the board via email. I'm, I'm comfortable mm -hmm. with that. Okay. Does anybody have any concerns on the board with that? Okay. Uh, Mr. Ritbell, we're going to have a tentative resolution for the next meeting. If you could get that drawing in about a week to us, we'll have some time to take a look at it, make sure it's adequate to go forward with the resolution. That'll help you along. Um, yeah. And most likely there will be, in fact, it sounds like there will be a condition that states say we understand uh, the constraints now, but in the future, uh, you know, we strongly suggest that, uh, you know, the parking uh, be migrated to the north side of the building. Uh, we may even attach uh, or make reference to the sketch or may ask you to, you know, kind of show that uh, laid out where it may be someday. And if you have to invest in tearing up your parking lot or repaving, you know, we would like to see it uh, uh, look more residential as, as any uh, investment occurs, okay? Okay. One thing I do have a question is before we um, end is – Obviously, with trucks and everything for construction, I would like to resurface this plan that I showed you guys tonight, at least, without having to do the whole grand scheme. I don't know if that's an option or not. It kind of shapes it in over there. I haven't I had a chance to pull it, I'll be honest with you. It's it's not terrible, but you know, by the time we're done driving trucks and everything over it, it it'll definitely need a resurface. Hmm. If I was living there, I'd want it to be resurfaced. Yeah. And, and you feel that uh, it isn't it isn't worth the invest uh, is it worth the investment for the even the resurface versus starting to you know migrate toward the better the newer parking lot? Um, in my opinion, I will say yes. Sorry, um, just for the fact that to migrate towards the grand scheme, it's going to take multiple loads of you know we're going to have to dig out, crusher run the whole nine where this is more or less just doing a top coat. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Why wouldn't wouldn't. You, Alex, why wouldn't you waste out on the north side of the property for everything? And then if you had to resurface the south parking spaces, you know, the majority of your construction could be coming out of the north end, which you have to extend the parking anyway. Yeah, I could do that. So I think you'd have minimal impact to the, to the four spaces to the south and the part of the loop. I mean, you'll have some construction activity, but a lot of it can go around the north end of the building to the back. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree the, with that. The south end of the building has has those couple big trees and the big tree line there. I think you'd be prohibited from doing most of your activities on that side. Yeah, I agree with that. Right. Excellent. Okay, any other questions or comments? All right, so I have a tentative resolution, Alex. Uh, uh, please update the drawing and uh, get it in as soon as you can. I know David will take a look at it and provide some feedback right away. And uh, we'll try to get there uh, the next meeting, which is uh, November 23rd. Okay. And if you have any concerns or you run any issues, uh, give Laura a call or, or Mr. DRPino. And, uh, you know, we can always postpone it until, you, until you're ready if, if, you, if you can't get there. Okay? Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. All right, anything further on 2721 Ball Town? Okay, we'll close 2721 Ball Town. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alex. And uh, we'll move to 2764 Troy Road. And that's the uh, uh, the animal hospital, right? Uh, veterinarian uh, site plan application for a new monument sign. And that's uh, Mr. Oster. Uh, Mo, are you back with us again? I know. Yeah, I, I, I am. Yes, thank you. I am back for my, for my, for my work call. Um, I, I presume the applicant is on the call. Yep, I'm with AJ Signs. Okay. Um, my my first question when I when was um, is the, I assume all the existing shrubbery is going to be removed, or is this going to be put in a different spot? Um, it is the owner plans on removing it um, and then just replacing with nice. Um, like a nice mulch bed or something like that and kind of simplifying uh, the area around it. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, what's interesting is I see the, you know, the, our town regulations about like not having it be more than 24, you know, 24 inches or two feet. I actually think that in that location, it's almost better to be a little higher. 
Well, that's the thing. We um, obviously, as you know, it's a busy road. Um, people are going fairly fast on it as well. So we just wanted to one maximize visibility with inst- with trying to stay in code, and two, we always, as sign manufacturers, take into account um, the New York New York weather. Um, so we easily can get uh, more than two feet of snow. So we like to make sure that the bottom of the sign base is above kind of that 20 to 30 inch sweet spot. So the bottom of their sign is not constantly being covered um, with snow potentially in the middle of winter. Do we know why it, the, the, it's that the, the we have it that that's that for the count code that it's not supposed to be more than two feet there? I mean, I guess this question is to Laura or anyone else. Um, I'm trying to pull it up right now, Mo. I, I, I don't know the answer. All I know is that's what the regulations are. Um, Oops, I'm up too well then. trying to scroll through the uh, packet here to get to the correct page. It's a little slow. There we go. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't, um, Mo, this is Clark. I, I don't know this for a fact, but my guess would just be that they don't want that taken to an extreme where you've got kind of like the monument sign at the Army Navy store on State Street where it's yeah. okay. 10 feet up in the air or something. You know? Right. What's right. the... Um, What's the current signage there? What's the equivalent of? I, I can't recall. I didn't get a chance to look. It's oh. sixty feet across, and I guess ninety-six feet high. But the ninety-six yeah, feet high, or ninety-six inches high, that'd be yeah. really high. Um, um, it, it consists of basically six feet of. Only two feet of that is sign, and it's six feet from the bottom of the sign to the ground. Hmm. Yeah, it's in the it's in the packet uh, right at the end pages yeah. uh, 46, 47, 48. Um, you know, it's, I guess I'll give you my my input is uh, the, only, the only concern I had was because it's not open underneath is whether uh, it impacts any visibility pulling in or off the site. I guess the answer is no to that. Would somebody just validate that and maybe the sign company? Um, there should be absolutely no uh, obstruction of view at all. The sign set back far enough where somebody can easily pull past it and see in both directions pulling out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because basically the uh, proposed sign, you know, is, you know, as far as the area is compliant, the height is compliant. Mm. The bottom line is just the, the bottom part. Uh, well, uh, is it, it's, uh, it was a, it's only a few inches difference. So my take, uh, yeah. Mr. Oster was that, uh, seems re- like a reasonable request, uh, for an improvement, uh, with minimal impact, if any at all. Yeah, I, I, I'm with I, I'm with you. I, I mean, I I actually to me the only thing I noticed was that you had all this shrubbery around the existing sign that you would have to have some plan for you do you know, you know do, doing. I think you need a I think you need some kind of reasonably broad sign so you could see it as you're driving down to connect to your road because you're going at a higher speed so you need to have something that's a little more visible. Okay. So I think that that this seemed reasonable. Yeah. One of the things I, I noted down is a lighting. Is there any current lighting on the, the sign now? And, and is there anything proposed? There, in place is um, ground lighting. I don't know. Honestly, that sign is very old. I don't know if it does turn on, quite frankly, at night or not. Um, but the plan is uh, to refurbish or just swap out those lights. So at night, it illuminates soft and nicely for people to be able to identify um, the property and the location to turn in. Okay. I, I don't think that was uh, shown the lighting on the, um, on the application or any of the drawings. Um, but it's pre-existing is what you're saying. Um, might just need to be fixed. Any concerns, Laura, from the planning department as far as lighting goes? Is any, uh, if it is externally lit? Externally lit. Um, we don't typically have as many problems except um, if, I guess just when they're fixing the bulbs, and this is just something that can be easily adjusted, if for whatever reason the bulb is kind of facing towards traffic, 
Um, sometimes that bothers people when they're driving, and that's just an externally lit issue. Sometimes we actually like internally a little bit better because they like glow. <laughs> but as long as um, the applicant works with us to make sure that the light bulb is like shining down and not into the eyes of oncoming traffic at night, um, externally lit is good. I'm, all the lighting is directed in one space and doesn't typically cause any kind of light pollution issues to the neighbors. Okay. And then you and then what time does it close? What time does the vet close? I mean, there's probably some overlap with darkness based based upon the time of the year. But honestly, I'm not sure off the top of my head okay. the exact um, hours of operation. I imagine it's probably something like four thirty or five o'clock at night. They might have an extended um, a day where they have extended hours, but it's they're certainly not seeing patients until nine o'clock at night. Yeah, so very there will be very few times when someone's be looking for it during the dark. Correct. But it, but if it's softly lit, again, it's just softly lit. Uh, I guess it doesn't really make a difference. It's a good uh, marker and it's uh, advertising, I guess, as long as it's you know not intrusive to the uh, the neighborhood or to the traffic, right? It's just a statement, I guess. Is there any concerns about uh, hours of operation? I don't think we have any concerns now, right? So I don't yeah. think we should I have any. I just looked on, on their website, too, just for our reference. And it doesn't look like they're open beyond 5 p.m. any nights of the week. And I'll just comment. I think the sign is a great improvement. I grew yeah. up in this town. I know where the place is. Still, I had a hard time finding it. Yeah. The sign just, the current sign just doesn't do it. Okay. It's definitely more notice. It, it's definitely yes. I mean, and, and if you're and 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 like and like Miss Gold said, I mean, if you you don't know where it is, it's it's not necessarily easiest thing to spot because the even though the sign is high currently, it's not there's not that much there, and there's definitely seems to be more substance to this sign. Yeah, yeah especially with all the uh, uh, vegetation there, kind of distracts the eye a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, so do we need... A lot of the cars are taller than they used to be. A lot of the vehicles are taller, and it makes it harder to see things in the distance. If something that shows up better in the first place is going to be easier to spot. Okay. All right, so it sounds like we're all pretty good with the, the uh, proposal. Um, we need a resolution, Laura, for this. Is this a, considered a site plan change, or is this just a... Uh, but was this just a discussion item for feedback from the board? Um, if you guys want to move forward with the slight variations to code, we should probably do a resolution. It's a non conforming use, but you want to memorialize that. You know, if if you know, if if they want the two weeks, they could they could bring it back down. But I, I feel like if you know you guys don't mind waiting the two weeks, we had to get that discussion. Um, but it would need a resolution. All right. Yeah, that's probably the right way to go because, like you said, since it is two feet or whatever it's so many inches different uh by having a resolution you know that that's good for us for uh future applicants to make sure we uh you know we have justification why and so on and so forth so why don't we have a resolution for the next meeting if that's okay mr oster and with the board uh approving the sign as proposed um and uh yep. we can bring this to closure yeah does that sound good yes Laura, I have a quick question. Does this mean that um, we would have to wait? I'm sorry, I might have just not picked up on that um, prior, but does that we have to wait two weeks and then attend a meeting again in two weeks just for the confirmation of the sign resolution? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we can review the building permit and have it ready to go and ready to be issued. Um, we don't ever mind doing things concurrently like that. But because it's a slight relief from code and stuff like that, you would definitely have to have the that final okay from the planning board in two weeks. So if we just moved down, I mean, I don't think my client's going to have an issue. I think we determined it was how many inches? Was it two inches above? Two. Yeah. yeah. Two or three, yeah. So if we, I don't think she's going to have an issue between the two or three inches and just reducing that height. Um would the board be okay to approve the sign if we agree to do it at two or three inches shorter than what we have it at now? Well, my view, my view is if you're, if you come into compliance, it's just a building permit. You don't need our It's approval. just a building permit. Yeah. 
I mean, we wouldn't be, you wouldn't even be here. I thought it was um, because of the zoning, wasn't it? Because we have a residential. Yeah, we were required to come just so that you guys could have a quick review of the sign. But if, but if they can bring it into compliance, I think you guys can give them the verbal okay now and we can issue the building permit because there isn't any formal action that needs to be taken by the board. If, if they do want a little bit of a waiver, then you do, then you do need to come back. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what we'll propose to the client only because they're going to take ownership and kind of, kind of um, convert the, the ownership over fairly quickly. Um, and I think the difference between the two weeks just for them opening and having a sign versus not will make a difference. Um, so I might propose that and kind of urge them to do it that way. Yeah. I, okay. So I'm glad we're having this discussion because to reiterate, yeah, if, I mean, when the request had come out, right, we said we wanted to see this in the planning board. If uh, there was no issue of conformance, I don't think I would have said we wanted to see it. Right. So. Um, yeah, if it was conforming, you know, um, we don't need to memorialize it. The the code, yeah. It's nice to talk about it. Uh, so I guess you're correct. If you uh, decide to come into conformance, I believe this board's opinion is, and people can step in uh, if they disagree, is go ahead and just get a building permit. If you okay. want to have the, if you want to have the waiver and you can't come into conformance, then we'll have a resolution and we'll give you approval in the next meeting anyway. But it'll be okay. two weeks out. Okay, so it's okay. your choice, and you can work with Laura on that and. Uh, and just, uh, and if we see you, we'll see you. If not, good luck. Yeah, and, and we'd you. love it a lot more if it was just compliant. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sound good? Yes, thank you. Mo, you okay with that, Mo? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much, everybody. I think we'll be all set on 2764 Troy Road. Then. Thank you. Right. you. Have a good night. All right. So that uh, closes discussion items for tonight. And um, you know, we can go on to reports. Uh, first up being the 2564, or excuse me, 2565 Baltown Road, the JG, JCC two week post installation review of the signage that we've been working on for some time here. Um, uh, there was no project lead on this, but uh, I know that uh, they've decreased the uh, light output lumens uh, much, uh, much better. And then uh, we had a couple week period where they had a white background and then the black letters and a black background, black background with the white letters, which is the way it's currently uh, being operated. I think, uh, I, I know that I'm, I'm good with the light intensity. Um, and I'm okay with the, uh, the black background with the white letters also. Um, so I think that was an open item where we need to document document that uh, the operational uh, characteristics um, as, as an open item and that's where we're at everybody anybody have any concerns at all with the signage well I'll just comment we don't have white on a black background we, until you're really up close we have gray letters on a black background uh, the problem for me the reverse was also a problem problem is that the matrix grays out the white and I don't know if there's any way they can adjust that get rid of the matrix or red or whatever they call it but either way until I'm on top of it it doesn't read clearly the good news is that at least the identifier which is the part of the sign that's most important the white on blue that's clear that doesn't have the matrix yeah, so, I know that. To me, the identifying part is the most important. Yeah, I, I do know that, um, you know, when they have four lines of information, obviously with the smaller font, I have a hard time with the driving by 40 miles an hour. Uh, but when they go to the three lines, which I think there's a, currently a message with three lines on there, it's, it's much easier to read, but we're not going to dictate that. That's their prerogative. We're just going to dictate the... Uh, basically the light intensity and the color. Um, I'll also mention that, you know, uh, that I didn't have much of a problem with the black background. Let's see, no, we got the black background, the white background and the black letters, um, as long as the intensity is down, that's just my personal preference or my personal opinion. Uh, but I think we're trying to set, uh, set it to the black background and into the white letters, right, Laura? On a go forward basis. Yeah, the memo that I have currently proposed, um, just waiting to hear from you guys, is black background with white lettering, daytime brightness setting at 3,500, and nighttime brightness setting at 350. 
that's what it's been for like the last two to three weeks. Um, and, um, I mean, I, I did hear kind of mixed comments from you guys, but I do think that if you're looking at making it the least bright um, as possible to the neighbors, um, the black background definitely casts less light at night. Yeah. Well, I think the dark background is the trendy thing. I found the reverse easier read. The yeah, black on the light background. Yeah, I'm okay with the way, personally, I'm okay with the way it is. Um, you know, guys, we're looking for feedback from anybody else. Have any concerns? And uh, one and one comment I do have, Laura, I guess for you is that, is if they want to change in the future, you know, circumstances change for some reason, something comes up, I mean, they would just come back to you and re repress the change. Is that how we would do that? Yeah, I mean, this was a pretty heavily planning board reviewed project. I would think that Changes to the memo would require them to come back to planning board approval. Right, yeah, they come, yeah, they come through you and then come back to us. Okay, I would think so. I, I don't. I wouldn't be comfortable administratively doing that just because it was it was theoretically set by the planning board, so I shouldn't yeah. undo it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. All right. Well, let's I hear of, of someone that has a concern, and I would su suggest that we're all set. Uh, with the way that's being operated now and that Laura will uh, document that and do we need a resolution for that or is that just a close out memo Laura? Yeah it's a close out memo because I think the third condition of your resolution for approval said that once the sign had been up for a while we do a memo of the settings attach that to the resolution and we get filed with the clerk. Beautiful. Okay anybody opposed? Okay seeing no one opposed and Laura let's uh, bring this to closure then okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. And last under reports is the uh, uh, COVID-19 updates. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to let everybody know, like at one of the last town board meetings, the supervisor said um, just because of the complications that come from the hybrid meetings, in-person meetings, that all meetings besides the town board were going to continue um, in virtual in the virtual format. And then we discussed an economic development committee. Um, there's a lot of limitations to the in-person meeting, to the hybrid meetings. There's a lot of like um, procedures and things and conflicts with the board being used, you know, by other entities in the town board. And I mean, cases in New York are going up. <laughs> so like, let's, um, let's not mess around with stuff right now. Keep everybody safe. We talked about it at our economic development committee. We're gonna hold our planning board meetings virtually till at least January. We'll let you guys know, you know, is there a food can in January as things evolve? But I, I just putting out there, there's no sense in rushing something that doesn't need to be rushed. Um, we've got a good format. I work with anybody who has difficulty with the meetings. I know that there are just a couple people out there that I'm happy to work with them on anything that they need so that they can watch, participate, and comment at our meetings. But I think we just want that extra level of safety right now. So we're suspending in-person meetings until at least January, provided the governor continues his um, allowance for that. But again, as cases are going up, I don't expect that there wouldn't be any continuation of the governor's executive order. Yeah, I know that uh, I believe the planning office, maybe Clark, uh, you received a call from a resident that you know is concerned about you know the public hearing that we had tonight, not being able to uh, uh, physically participate in that meeting because they you know either they're not computer literate or don't have the correct hardware or software or whatever to uh, to be able to uh, go to those meetings. But so I received a call also you know concerned that you know for public hearings it um, it would be nice to uh, be able to come and and, and speak. At, at that physically, um, and you know, and I and I, you know, I'd like that myself, and I'm looking forward for us getting back together uh, uh, physically, uh, hopefully sooner than later, um, and that would help alleviate the concern from the public that um, don't like using the computer, you know, or the phone for meetings. So, so let's do our best to make sure we get uh, information out there, um, uh, you know, so that we can help alleviate any concerns that. Uh, that we're not being transparent because of this current situation the best we can, please. Yeah, um, and we talked about this a little bit before, but the, the town board has less people. So the town board is a five person member uh, board. You guys are seven and the alternates are required to attend. 
So that's automatically nine people. And then there's typically actually more staff that supports you um, as compared to the town board. So when you start looking at holding an in-person planning board meeting with the limitations that you have in the room, you're leaving like a minimal amount of chairs open for the public, um, which, I mean, I, I, I do understand the in-person, but, um, I, you know, just by the rules that are out there for the in-person meeting, it's, it's not that step isn't isn't the offering that you may feel like it would normally be you can't compare us directly to the town board we we come with a whole lot more people <laughs> yeah. well we, we can always minimize you know like the applicant how many people they could bring but again you're you're correct laura there's not a lot of seats once yeah. you take into account the size of our board and the alternates and everything but, i mean um, in the meantime for residents who fit that description they could bring a written paper or document into the office right They'd have to come one way or the other in person. We always, like, when we hear those concerns, too, we always reach out and say, listen, like, you know, we'll wear our masks and set the computer up for you. Like, bring it here, bring it there. We can make these things work for you. We're really happy to try and work with any level of technology. And, you know, some people are just uncomfortable with that and really just want to go back to meeting in person. And like I, Kevin says, like, we'd love to see that. But like right now, with the risks out there, there isn't, mm -hmm. we bring a lot more people into a room is not a really good comparison. So I think that it's just for now, we're just gonna do the safest thing for everybody and um, continue to do all that outreach and continue to reach um, as many people as we possibly can um, publicly and with as much clarity as we can, but keeping people safe. Right, and, and again, I'll just say, Laura, I know you're always willing to help. Um, and so anybody that's watching this video on YouTube, uh, uh, meet, you know, follow up is contact Laura. She'd be glad to help you or I'd be glad to help you can, you know, even if you don't have a computer, again, you can call in on the phone. You don't have to write a long letter. You don't have to send an email. You can call in on the phone. Just reach out to the planning office, and we'll make sure that you get the phone number and you have that opportunity. Okay? All right. Thank you, Laura. Anything else on uh, COVID-19 at this time? Uh, no. Nope. It's Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get it over with, right? Yeah. Yeah, All it's right. always a changing situation, so we appreciate how patient you guys are. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's it for reports, um, and we'll go on to commission business. If you have any questions for Laura, we can bring those up during uh, your opportunity during commission business. So we'll start with uh, Mr. Oster. you have anything for us tonight? I do not. Okay. Mr. Diarpino? Nothing tonight. Mr. McPartland? Nothing from me. Mr. Khan? Um, just, just briefly, and I mean, you know, I typically bring it up, and I don't know where we always end up with it, but... Given some of those letters that came in on the Broken Inn restaurant, again, our distance requirement for public hearings, right? We we ever so often hear that people who, I mean, Via Del Mar, yeah, I can see it's still, quote unquote, far away, but it's also close enough. So I don't know how we ever want to do that, right? Um, do we formally want to increase that or not? Or I feel it'll be remiss if I don't just at least bring that up for discussion whenever it pops up. I mean, I, I, if you guys wanted to change the radius, you know, my staff can actually really do um, anything, but I do think that it should be formalized and voted on to some extent by the planning board so that, it, so that it's consistently applied and we kind of have a reason right. if, you know, somebody, as it's not in our code, we've talked about it, some radiuses are and some aren't. So the 200 foot radius is what we have used um you know, for 20 or 30 years. And we do, and I agree with you, that does come up. And I was actually surprised. I, you know, I wish I had looked harder. I didn't realize that 200 feet didn't reach those last two residents on Via Del Mar. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, I, I, you know, one of the arguments I'd heard early on was that, you know, there's a cost obviously associated with this, whether it's mailing mm -hmm. or whatever, but I really can't see a, a reasonable increase whatever that's going to end up being really breaking the bank on mailing or whatever it is that increases the cost. We can handle it if you guys want to make a higher radius. I guess um, we just yeah. like, think through it. Like if there's an unintended consequence, I don't know what it would be. <laughs> but, it would be yeah. too many people coming to the meetings. Well, well I, 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 I think what will happen is literally you get the next rung of people saying they're being excluded. I mean, I think, but I do think Mr. Connor's right. I think, but I, I think it is a common complaint that they didn't know it's nearby. 
So I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Although, although I think the people who live in the next, le- you know, the next, who are in the 700 feet away, you didn't let me know, you know, we'll, that will be next. And another option would be to consider, um, you know, we, uh, the notice, obviously legal notice goes into Gazette, our newspaper. Um, but, you know, uh, we could, we could maybe do something with the website too, uh, the town website where, where there's any public uh, notifications that would go into the Gazette that maybe there's a link on the, on the homepage that takes you to that, or that's more apparent, uh, those notifications. Yeah, yeah or, or right. I mean, definitely. Or, or we, you know, I, I know this, this is probably not the most desirable solution, but we maybe for certain circumstances, like specifically this restaurant's location, we do then give the planning department some leeway to make a judgment, right? So mm-hmm. that when you actually look at it and see where the radius is, and there's two houses that really look like they should be there, but they're excluded because they're 10 feet away. Yeah. I know that yeah, I think that would be a question for legal you want counsel, though, about... However, that might be a question for legal counsel. Yeah. yeah. No, no, hey, that's a very scary proposition. Understood. Yeah. And the only reason I would say, because at my old job, we actually got a lawsuit over how we noticed a site plan um, because they wanted to make sure their procedures were consistent, which is why I would want like some kind of a formal documentation of the procedures changing. And you no, know, I agree with you. It makes perfect logistical sense to look at that and be like, oh, the last two people in Vietnamar aren't on here. Um, I, I remember like, like the lawsuit was literally like who got drawn in and who got drawn out and which is why like we really like to rely on just that 200 feet and not a judgment call on who yeah, well, be- yeah yeah well but the basis would i mean anyway we don't have to belabor it but i've just raised it again right the basis would be just it's 200 feet and then an additional that's at the discretion of the planning department oh and just so add yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so it's, it's a minimum of 200 but- feet with the discretionary piece <laughs> Does the town absorb the cost for mailing the notices for public hearings? Um, well, theoretically, any public hearing that we call has a, a site plan application or subdivision fee associated with it. And, you know, everybody's always like, oh, our fees are, doing it. they're not very high, but they do cover um, public hearing notices and mail outs. They probably don't fully cover staff time, <laughs> but technically, like, you know, they would definitely be covering mail outs and stuff like that. I had a friend recently in a different district in a different state who referenced that she was, you know, spending $150 because their town requirement was they had to physically prepare the public notices, bring them to the town, and then the town sends them out, but it's all on on her. So Colony requires the developer to prepare them a public hearing notice, get it approved, and post it door to door. They require that it actually gets posted door to door by the developer in a certain radius. Hmm. Wow. Anyway, I mean, we, we see this complaint ever so often that I always remember that we have this discussion every single time. Yeah, if, yeah, if it makes sense to update our procedures so that we can help, I like to do those things. Yeah, yeah. if there's other models out there, I guess we should, you know, know what the other models are, like you said, town and colony or whatever. I know you've got enough work to do with the planning department right now, but that'd be yeah. nice to know. Yeah, maybe, maybe if not the next meeting, maybe next meeting or December meeting, we could just put together just a couple of references of what the surrounding towns do and see if we want to like kind of formally move to a slightly higher radius or a slightly different procedure so that there would be more more notification. Yeah, it'd be nice if they had the, the procedure could uh, alleviate some work in the planning office by having developers do it at their expense and their time. So. I'm like, I'm like. OCD though, I, I I like to actually know what the notice says, put it in the mail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the public looks at us as the representative board is actually having that responsibility. Yeah, you'd still get a copy. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes like the mail, it comes back to us. So like we have a folder of, yeah. you know, when it bounces back. We're just going to find public notices dumped in a trash can. Mm. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Mr. Khan? No, I'm sorry. That's all. Thanks. No, no, thank you. About Mr. Laflam. Uh, nope, nothing to add. Okay, and Ms. Gold. As a public administrator, retired though I may be, I would be very, very careful about going to a measure where somebody's 
uh, that kind of discretion because it's going to look arbitrary and or capricious to those on the other side. Uh, and I just would not want to see the town exposed to unnecessary lawsuits or something like that. I think we're better off with a rule that's consistently applied. So from that, I have a question. Um, normally, early winter, well, sometime January, February, there's like a planning conference for planning and all of that. Uh, you know if they're going to do anything virtually or where does the whole training scenario stand? I've been getting emails, uh, Planning Federation, a couple different uh, uh, email lists where the webinars have been the way to go. I, I'm behind. I'm expecting probably I'm going to be doing some training in December to get caught up. But I don't think there's any other option right now. Right? Unless you go to uh, New York State Department of State, I believe, has training materials also on their website. Um, or you sign up for some of these webinars, you know. Yeah. All in hand, but suspended you're gonna have to do it virtually this year or in the spirit of sats and regions maybe we just waive our training requirement for 2020. I, you know i mean i wonder if the governor will even come out with something it probably wouldn't be the end of the world although there are a lot of good webinars coming out from like cdtc i can i've been meaning to send you guys a list of them yeah and most of them are free laura is that is that a true statement I think like ten dollars, but I would pay for you guys. Okay, yeah, keep an eye out, and if I if I get some emails, I'll forward it forward it to everybody. Okay, if you're not signed up for them. All right, and that was Ms. Gold. Anything else, Ms. Gold? No, thank you. Okay, thank you, and Ms. Shenfield. Last but not least. Nope. Nothing for me. Okay. And I have nothing except for thank you as always for everybody and uh, for your extra work going out for site vis visits. I do appreciate that. I, I wasn't able to make a couple because of some conflicts, but uh, I appreciate the planning department and all you guys going out and uh, walking the site. It's great. Um, okay, so that's all I have. Nothing further. And I'll uh, ask uh, for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, adjourn by Mr. Khan and seconded by second. Wait, wait to see hand. Ah, Leslie, there's yeah, a hand. Okay, yeah. seconded by Leslie. So we have uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, hearing no one opposed, we'll adjourn uh, the 11 9 2020 meeting at 9 28 p.m. Thank you, everybody, and have Thanks a great evening. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.